That's what this is now, don't I? This is the Black Rifle Coffee Podcast. Hi, welcome Tim Kennedy and Crispy Omar Avia. The weather today is uh, <laughs> dark. Good to have you guys. It's, it's lovely weird. to be here. It's, it's been a long time. Too long. We really haven't seen each other for how long? It uh, has been eight months. Golly. Yeah, last time I saw you was in Salt Lake. Um, yeah. I was there for work. And That's right. He stopped in. Military Leadership School mm-hmm. has a name. I don't remember what it was. And then I was there teaching a shooting course and you were there just doing Evan things. That was literally the last time. I made time. you coffee. Oh, so in my, good. In my kitchen, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we were... And uh, um, even though Black Rifle had origins and genesis there, there's not um, great coffee around the military base. But yeah. there's great coffee in, in Salt Lake. Yeah, just, surprisingly, yeah. But around the military base, it's like the worst. The worst. Mm. Yeah. I don't it's know all... if like the average like Joe Schmo has the most, you know, complex palate when it comes to coffee, but we're changing the game, you know? But it, then again, outside of every post, there's like shitty housing, like it's the hood outside. So I don't really see why this should be Not good all of them. Most of them. It's army. That's when you yeah. go army. <laughs> when yeah. you're in the Navy, yeah, that's, that's a different Airport. story, yeah. dog. That's, yeah, that's true. San Diego? That, that is, oh, that's true. Come on, man. That is true. Like, I, know, I should have said the army. Yeah, you're, right, you're right. They yeah, always yeah. talk about that with the Marines, how they're the ones roughing it. But at the end of the day, they're co-located usually in naval bases and yeah. they have dope ass cities the like best. San Diego, yeah. the like no Camp doubt. Pendleton. Yeah. You kidding me? You're oh, like, you're in two hours Hollywood. Please bitch about like how tough your Marine life is. I don't hear about it. I'm sure you know because when we're on uh, Fort, me... Fort Lewis and I drove over to like before it was JBLM we'd go over the, the Air Force side and there was like green grass and like girls drinking Corona I'm like what they're, they're what? in the military why are they how <laughs> yeah. is this even feasible how are they playing volleyball <laughs> yeah. at 2 o'clock in the afternoon yeah, and they're all tan barbecuing laughing yeah. like <laughs> <laughs> great uniforms yeah. great locations <laughs> Yeah, I think it's just it's just weird. I guess we're stupid because yeah, yeah, we're all essentially. Let me yeah. introduce you to a couple of our jewels: Fort Hood, <laughs> Fort Bliss. <laughs> there you go. You like those? Just I mean, to name a few. Yeah, just to name or... a few heavy hitters. Fort Bragg. Fort Bragg. Now, sure. when Columbus and yeah. Fayetteville are like mm-hmm. your litmus test for how good you can have it, and that's yeah, the best okay. that there is. After, yeah. after exit three, let's take you to better. upstate New York. <laughs> Fort Drum coming in. Nice. <laughs> What's the one in Alaska? Yeah. That would be actually Greeley. a funny. There's Greeley yeah. in Fort Alaska. There's Fort Greeley and Fort something else. Uh, Richardson. Yeah, I, I, I think Evan has a good terrible. joke. There is is like for a skit about you're a travel agent, but you're a recruiter for the <laughs> army. Like, do you want to see the lovely hill co- ish country of Fort Fort Hood? Yeah, yeah come on the, down to the army. Texas is blowing up. <laughs> it really is. Let me tell you, hill country is beautiful. <laughs> this isn't exactly hill country. Yeah. This is what we call flat country. Yeah. You'll get lost in the beauty of white sand. Yeah. No, seriously, you'll get fucking lost. You're out gonna there. get lost, and it's very dangerous because there's a lot of UXO out there. Your top three. <laughs> Here's Evans <laughs> traveling. <Yeah. laughs> and uh, we broke a record last year. We only had nine murders and 17 sexual assaults at, at Fort Hood oh, alone. Fort Hood, so, yeah, that's, yeah, right. yeah, that's yeah. great. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Great year. Great, great year, guys. Yeah. Oh, Ford. Let's take you down south. Fort Polk, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Fort Polk, right. There you go. It's nice and swampy. <laughs> cool. Everywhere. You want like some your... oceanfront property? Uh, property? Uh, Fort Polk is for you. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't exist. Not in the Army catalog. <laughs> doesn't exist. Are there any coastal bases in the Army? Like in, in, there has in to Conus, be. there has to be something yeah. on the East Coast. Hawaii? There's, oh, seventh group yeah. is at Eglin, but yeah. that's an Air Force base. Yeah. Um, okay, so that doesn't count. I mean, the closest thing I can think of to the beach is Hawaii. Yeah, but lower like, 48, I'm not lower, sure. I think there's some stuff in the East Coast. I'm not sure about the giant. Who no knows, idea. whatever. Yeah. Hey, when you have it's to think that hard here. to find yeah. a military right. army yeah. base that's by the ocean. Wait, isn't there some in Florida? Go to a different branch. An army branch in Florida? There is. I mean, there's a section of Ranger School. That's the only time I was in yes. the military in Florida. Oh, that's lovely coastline. <laughs> so great. It is coastline. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I totally forgot yeah. about that. <laughs> Eglin, and then, uh, it's like, uh, is this poison ivy? No, no, that's just rot of the crotch. <laughs> your rot, rot of the You're rotting in your armpit. Yeah. Yeah. I was, what was the tag? I did that. No. Hey, so what are you even up to? I know. Uh, well, b- big news. Yeah. You wrote book. a book, uh, dude. Uh, words. Hey, words. Yeah. I'm going to tell you right now, okay. I, I wanted to read it before this podcast and I didn't. So, okay. but I am going to read it. It's 
in my bag. It is not right a now. small book. It is relatively small. No, the first three like, chapters I mean, talks about pages how, or something. Yeah. Hey, says, I was surprised. MMA, Ranger, and then it, it starts. I was surprised <laughs> that you invited a West Point graduate to help you with your words. Yeah, there oh, there yeah. was a, many points Hold of contention, on. friction, and and <laughs> constant contrite between us. Um, and surprisingly, he was the problem because he would like project fucks, for example. Right. You know, I'm like eight. And in one paragraph, he's there was nine uses of fuck. And I'm like, so I was eight at this time. He's like, but look at how you talk. That's yeah, fair. but I didn't talk like that as I was eight. <laughs> and uh, so we would we would argue a little bit. Not that Nick and I ever argue about things. Of course not. Well, you and Nick have been friends for how long? Like, I, I want to know that origin story. How did you and Nick become friends? I'm about Nick Palmashano. Yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah. Founder of Ranger, uh, yep. co-founder, yep. however the title Our is. Our business partner and yeah. in um, a great, maybe best movie ever made. Yeah. Which, speaking about fucks, I think we were like number four for the amount of fucks used ever. in film ever. ever. Are yeah. you fucking kidding me? Yeah, no. Exactly. That's yeah. fucking awesome. Yeah. yeah. It was epic. Um, so Nick was, had just started Ranger Up and uh, I was stationed in Fort Bragg. And um, I got contacted by Greg Thompson, who was my jujitsu coach at the time, that somebody needed a military fighter for a wounded warrior photo shoot. And um, so I go to this wounded warrior uh, fundraiser photo shoot event and uh, I'm jacked. They have these Harleys and they have like all these beautiful girls. And um, I get up on top of this bike and they put this model in front of me and this model behind me and this this little like Italian voice coming from this dude that is as wide as he is tall, who I did not know. <laughs> it was like, first time you ever had something that big between your legs. And I'm like, hmm, that's funny. Uh, I don't know you. And uh, I literally murder people for a living. And I look over and it's Nick. And so he is this commentary throughout this whole entire photo shoot that was nonstop degrading, oh, demoralizing, embarrassing, humiliating. And they are all really witty and clever. So it's like, I hate you. I'm going to kill you. Uh, when I get done with this photo shoot, I don't know you. But then, you know, about an hour into this, um, I was like, okay, he's, he's legitimately funny. But the crux of the moment was one of the models, uh, my now wife, Ginger, not my wife then, I was just seeing her, uh, was wearing baller shoes. Ginger always has fantastic tastes in footwear. And the model was like, oh my God, those are so gorgeous. Can I borrow those? And she's like, sure, sure you can. So she takes them off and she hands this to this model. This model continues to shoot um, all of these photos with me. Right. And um, the girl's like, thank you so much. And she walks over and hands them to Ginger. And Ginger like takes them like this and drops them in the trash. And Nick was standing right there and I'm next to Nick and and. She just looks at me dead as she like drops these things in the trash can <laughs> and walks out the door. And uh, I'm like, oh, and Nick's like, I'm, I'm sorry about that. I'm like, I know, I think everything's fine. He's like, no, everything's not fine. And um, if, you, if you need a place to stay tonight, just let me know. <laughs> so that was kind of the, the, finally the ice broke and, and um, I uh, did need a place to sleep. Did you really? <laughs> no. <laughs> you know what Ginger really well, but she's gangster. Like, what, what she's was that? Yeah. This was 2005, oh, maybe 2006. Okay. She is gangster. She had two of his kids. Yeah. 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 Giant freaking kids he's had. Oh, yeah. They laugh. The, the doctors look like, you know, a month before delivery and they're like, just so we're super clear, there is zero chance that your 100 pound frame would deliver one of his children. <laughs> so yeah. just, we're going to have to cut it out. Just, I haven't had a kid under 10 pounds, so. Dude, we, uh, we did an event. <laughs> That's a weird flex. They're not round. Remember when we did They're that event in, uh, at that JL bar ranch or something? Mm. They had just had their kid, and she shows up, and oh, yeah. baby, and then I'm like, um, this kid? She's like, oh, t two months. I'm like, wait, you, you, you had that? She's like, Tim's baby, and I was like, damn. Yeah, she was like 20 pounds. Yeah. Oh my months. gosh! Yeah, like, it was. It, yeah, she she's was a forty-pound two-year-old. Yeah, she was huge. That's a, wow. that's a giant two-year-old. Yeah. yeah, just in child references. That is a that is a very large child. Yeah, I'm not really sure what yeah. a two-year-old should wear. Right, right. Have kids, <laughs> they're like, so. they're usually like this big, yeah, but like, yeah, this tiny. one's like this one. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so that's how I met Nick. And um, Nick was present in all of the moments. Now, you guys know me pretty well. Yeah. I am not a attention to detail and I'm present pretty like in the present moment type person. You are. 
Yeah. And um, past is pretty irrelevant. And uh, so if I'm walking out of a fight and let's say I just totally demolished Michael Bisbing and I take off my gloves and I throw them in the trash, I take off my wraps and I throw them in the trash, I take my banner, I throw it in the trash, I walk in the shower, I clean my balls and I walk out the door because I'm off to the next thing. And uh, Nick goes to the trash can and he pulls my gloves out and he pulls my shorts out and he pulls my wraps out. And he's just been that friend the whole entire time. You know, when I was in Afghanistan and in super dark places, right. he was there being like, uh, so let's write about this and let's help you process of, you know, what it feels like to sit there and shoot people for two hours that are just partially dead laying on the ground. Like I realize that's a hard thing for somebody to process. Let's, let's work through that. So he's been that, that guy for a long time. Is there, so <clears throat> was there a specific objective when you, when you decided to write the book that you were going for? Cause like, I know like I had my version of what I wanted to project and I know other people that wrote their book. There was a, was there a specific thing or is it just like, look at this crazy life and this is what it made it? Or, or do you have like a, an exact thing that you're trying to communicate to the audience that reads this book? Because you're a public figure. People know about your life within reason, but they no. probably don't know the emotional components that have kind of motivated you through your life. And I'm sure the book kind of touches on that. Yeah, the, I mean, the the big arc, you know, there's the 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 story of me is the thing that's delivering ultimately what I'm hoping people take away from it is that, you know, like we've had a ton of failure. We've had a ton of shame. We've had a lot of success, you know, but that success is never earned. Like it's never just like given to us, not in my life. I don't think in either of your lives. Um, so it's been like, um, you know, I look back to me being a brand new E5 showing up to a team and thinking I'm the fastest, the strongest, the best. And all the things that I said to my first team leader, to my first team sergeant, and like how embarrassing those moments were and the shame involved in that. Those are always normally buried now. You know, like people don't talk about those moments. They don't talk about standing out in front of the team room door where they took all the stuff and they threw it out in the driveway. And they're like, Tim, you can't come into the team room because you're pretty much useless. <laughs> you know, so just actually just stay outside in the parking lot. That, that's the best place for you. Um, and then finally, when I was allowed in, they're like, Mario, I want to say, uh, the senior 18 Charlie was like, can you just go take everything that's in the gym that's currently on the left wall and move it to the right wall? Yeah, I can do that. So that was the best moment up to that time of my team c contribution. Um, but those are stories that everybody, no one ever tells. And I don't know why this whole book is those stories. You know, it's like, um, there's no standing on top of the Everest moment. There's no um, I'm awesome moment. It is just nonstop shame and humiliation. And, um, and that's the arc because in the end you see success, like people see all the businesses and, you know, but what they, what they miss is really the struggle and the failure. And that's what the book is. I'm glad that you say that because you often see that in a lot of military books where it's just like, you know, uh, they came in as a badass, they stayed a badass and they're still a badass. It's like, no, like the warrior mentality and spirit is forged through trials, tribulations, shame, and all that other stuff. Because, I mean, similar thing, like when you go to Ranger Town, you think you're a badass. They're like, you're a fucking nobody, <laughs> you dork piece of shit. You're like, oh, wait, I thought I was cool. And yeah. Yeah, it's, it's kind of hard. I probably didn't but bring I, this I, up. I, but I did rip. Did you not know? Like, yeah. It's some pretty uh, cool. Just, just let you know. Like, uh, <laughs> pretty sweet. I'm a commander. Yeah. yeah. I mean, what, a, what about like... 11 Bravo, Blue Cord. I don't know if you've seen this Blue Cord. I've never seen this Blue Cord. Yeah, I'm, I'm, an, I'm an expert rifleman badge. I shot 38 out of 40. I uh, eight jumps now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Check it. One of the things that I that I always love and that I've, you know, not the reading Matt's book and now your book, like one of the things that I really enjoyed was, I'd known him for a while, and it's those stories that I read, like when he talked about in California and being in the garage and all that stuff. Like, do you have your backstory because obviously I know it we've shared this on many trips that we've done together for work but like are you talking about how you joined like your brothers and and your father like that story that you told us about yeah being out in the ocean and all that stuff is that like yeah that's all in there that's awesome yeah that's awesome yeah I and mean, the only the only little tiny bits were what DOD um like they didn't like the word hazing yeah um no. but yeah. It was such an important moment yeah. in early war. Like when we went, were at war, they absolutely hazed the shit out of every one of us. Yeah. You know, like we went from 600 people, 700 people in Sop C and we graduated with 88. How did they get rid of the rest? They hazed them, you know, and those 88 still had a higher percentage of death than anyone else because they're all 18 x-rays with no combat experience and no experience in the military. So that was a really necessary, important element. But that DOD was like, yeah, I don't know about that word. And I was like, you kidding me? Yeah. Besides those moments, everything is in there. That's awesome. That, that's interesting you said, because I think a lot of people don't see that with the book. They tend to actually let things go that you might not think would go through, but yeah. then the other part, 
what is the exact thing. There's like keywords like hazing and some other things in my book that I ran into. But I'm glad that they like let you tell that whole story because I, man, we've been friends for years, but I don't know that like personal level of you. And, that, and I'm really, really excited because I don't, I don't get excited about books that often, but I'm you still excited. I knew it was a douchebag. You know, <laughs> weird. Oh, that. you get when you read mine, you're <laughs> like, oh, he is a cocky little shit, just like in his videos. Yes, indeed. You, you know, like, um, what's it called when 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 you when you have a set perspective, a bias, um, confirmation bias. Yeah, confirmation. You know, it's bias. like, ah, Evan is insert whatever my view is of him, and then as I'm looking at all the things about him, whether it's Instagram, or social media, I just keep grasping the exclusive little bits to f- support my view. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, uh, that yeah, confirmation yeah. bias is super inaccurate mm-hmm. um, for all the people that hate me. And there are lots. All of the reasons why you hate me are going to be supported by this book. You know, <laughs> um, like every fault, every failure, it's all in there. Um, <laughs> you feel like they're going to grab but, some of that and like, that's going to be the next thing they no start doubt. posting on, on your book. No doubt, 100%. Yeah. yeah. Like, I knew that. I, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank Definitely. the Lord. Is that really coffee? Oh, there's coffee. Oh my uh, gosh. So I was going to say American here. We have yeah. we have a we have an English hero yeah. delivering coffee. <laughs> this is, this is way Drake below your paper. Can you uh, I, I can like you, paper. I like can paper. Can we please here, check take, to make sure that's take, coffee take and not tea? I like paper. Yeah. I like white. I don't like drinking coffee out of black cups. It's an OCD thing. What is like a tea? If I drink out of a black cup, uh, I can't it's see it's the, it's a, it's the coffee one. and how black it is or how <laughs> white it is against the edge of the cup. So I don't like you, drinking out of black cups. It just oh. bothers me. It's just a, it's a weird coffee thing. I, I will say this about the book, Tim. Like, I, because I've been through that process and, and I'm using that experience to kind of like tell, because you're, you're saying all those things. And I think that there's a level of courage it actually takes to communicate that much about yourself to the world because you're essentially forever. Like that's the thing with books. It's forever, forever that that will be a resource and a blueprint for people to cast judgment and or learn about it. And it, it's easy to, to say, talk shit and all that, but there, there's something so informational. And I think it goes a long way for people that look up to you and all the amount of people that you've inspired to join the military and continue their service. Like it, that, it, I think it's very important. And you know, you had the people that combat people writing about military books because they say, hey, your service should be your service. I actually quite lead, like massively disagree with that. I think we have to document, especially the times during the GWAP, because there's so many lessons learned and things that happened and reasons we went to war that probably need to be told to the future generations so we don't make the massive mm-hmm. fucking failures yeah. that we yep. did. And, yep. you know, the preservation of American life is the main thing. And I think those stories that you'll tell will like really help that. So yeah, I'm I mean, proud I of you agree doing with you more. My, my uncles who fought in Vietnam, um, you know, they're, they're in their seventies now. And I am, every time they text me, I'm at the edge of my seat, you know, cause they're towards the end of their lives and yeah. they never yeah. wrote anything. You know, like that whole entire generation, the Vietnam war, like how many books, how hard do we fight to find books from the Vietnam war and all of the faults and all the failures that happened in that war, we repeated in this GWAT, yeah. all of them. You know, like, and, and for guys like us, like I didn't have those reference materials to go to the most, the, the nearest and closest unconventional guerrilla warfare that was a legitimate resistance and something that was current with modern day military, there was nothing for us to go to. You know, like Petraeus and um, who wrote the, the, the GWAT counterinsurgency manual, they, they were really just shooting from the hip because mm-hmm. there was not... <clears throat> enough reference material for them yeah. to look at something besides World War II era stuff. It's like, yes, all veterans out there, go right. Yeah. Go run for office. Yeah. Go right. Well, go run like, for office. There's a ton go of right. stories out there, dude, that, that like, I'm a big fanatic of World War II. Like, I love diving in on those things. And there's a lot of stories that aren't in books that, that haven't been shared. Like, there is a big, there's a unit from Mexico that actually came and fought in World War II and they were like some of the best pilots during World War II and they were taking down Germans like left and right like the stories like that that haven't been told this is a great example of confirmation bias (laughs) what's that? because I said Mexicans yeah yeah Uh, so there's some great Mexicans that fought in World War II they're the best pilots ever I love reading stories about Mexicans Mexicans in World War II (laughs) outside of that I don't care but (laughs) but yeah but you're right I've met a lot of Vietnam veterans like for example you met Bob where we go at the shooting range back in when I used to live in the hill country yep that guy, he, his whole unit got wiped. Everybody in his platoon died except him. And he pushed on and he was able to bring some of those bodies out. But he's never told that story to anybody. I heard it from his wife. And then I asked him, 
And he's like, you need to come later on tonight. Let's have a drink and let's sit down and talk. And we sat down and talked. And I tell you, like, I've read, I've heard stories. I, you know, we've all seen the movies, but I was on the edge of my seat every single second that he was talking. I did not interrupt at all. And his story was just amazing. Like he was the only survivor in his platoon. And I was, I was, I was just like, how do you, how do you live with that? Like, that's, that's insane. Well, and it's shocking. It, it's shocking you didn't interrupt him one time. It is. <laughs> <laughs> you bastard. <laughs> that was solid. That was solid. solid. Great I delivery. Perfect say that. timing. When does, uh, when does your book come out? Because you got the, 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 you can pre-order. Pre-read. Yeah, well, it's pre-order pre-order's now. on right now. Yep. Um, we're going to kick it off on June 7th is the day they will ship and you can physically pick them up. Um, Library of Congress is the event number one. Um, where they'll hand me the actual real copy and oh, cool. yeah. Wow. I wish you the best success, but just don't go over. Um, you know, number Got five it. on the New York. Yep. Well, they won't give that to you because you're you're you know. Hey, an, maybe an Elon will buy then, the New York Times, and then we and can then turn this around it. too. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. Like we can we can hold out. <laughs> we, we might be get yeah. you on there. Yeah, there's a chance. <laughs> There's a chance. So you you kind of mumbled that. It's a fascinating uh, experience. You know, as Nick is a pretty data-driven person, um, co-author for Scars and Stripes, we have gone down the rabbit hole oh, yeah. of data oh, yeah. on how does New York Times rate their bestsellers. And we'll just use, what is the most polarizing name we could come up with right now? Okay, a Trump. All right, let's yeah. just say a Trump yeah, yeah. wrote a book <laughs> and that Trump doubled the next person to him in total sales, um, not just in category and just overall. Yeah, There's no way that that person no, that. would be number one New York Times bestseller. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I, there's a lot of things that they they use to quantify like the the end state of like who gets number one, right? But, you know, when I when I launched my book, I think it was the opening week was something like 47,000 combined sales. And so those are all your pre-orders that get bucketed into that first week. That's combined sales with like local bookstores, right? But the thing is, is there's no specific thing of like how they rate the process. But like if you buy a book at Barnes and Noble that's rated significantly higher than like an audio book. Yep. But I had 47,000. Um, Michelle Obama was number one. And she had at the time that week sold 9,200 books. So like I crushed it. But the problem is it's like they, they how long you've been on there and they do all this weird shit to make sure <laughs> it's all subjective. our it's types subjective. or whatever. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. massively yeah. subjective. It's, it's political in nature. And you know, but my fuck you but to them and I, and I wish you the best. Well, that's, so when I republished my book after with the new covers, I didn't put New York Times on there. I was like, you guys want to fuck me? Fuck you. And I put yeah. number one national bestseller because I was. And that was my F you to them. Not that they ever fucking cared about yeah. any of that, but. No, they called me and they said they were <laughs> yeah. really disappointed <laughs> yeah. uh, from Matt's Matt best book yeah. cover. And I was oh, like, no. is he mad at us? Well, I'll Can be sure to tell him that. I just and and honestly, the, the only reason that I was frustrated with it, right? Which should be the same as your story. Which you want it to stay and be populated high in that list be because the more it's on the list, the more people that are going to see it, the more people that are going to be inclined to read it. And then that message is pushed out yeah. farther rather than some, you know, propaganda bullshit that like hyper left trash that gets on there. You know, it's like, well, actually let us tell our side of the story. I mean, you nail it. You said the message gets out there. So, you know, the, the message is inspiring. The message is um, like, cool, you're going to fail. So did I, you're going to suffer. So did I, it doesn't matter. Just welcome to the club. And, um, and that, that, that's the part that irritates me is that they're undermining great people trying to tell great stories to inspire people to go do great things. Not just me, not just you, but there has been limitless, I mean, yeah. that list has been around for a long time and they've done it to a lot of great people. Well, great, yeah, to- Farmer Matt has, and I'm, I'm a nobody, but there's some rad people that, you know, didn't get the, the publicity I think that they deserve. Yeah. So, but who the fuck am I? I can just say shit into a microphone. I, I, I think it's pretty interesting because you've always been pretty self-deprecating, like just in the time that I've known you, right? So you, you've been able to accomplish a lot, which is kind of an understatement, I think, is if, if you're talking about Tim Kennedy. And I think anybody that knows him, and I, I, I'm one of those people that I'm fortunate enough to call you my friend, it's interesting because I hear, sometimes you hear the counter narrative, like that Tim Kennedy, such an arrogant guy. I'm like, do you know him? 
Like, are you fucking serious? Have you listened to any conversation with him on one thing? He's always like, oh, I'm kind of an idiot. Like, I, I don't know how many times you've said that. In a, and it's, it, I think there's a perception, especially when you come from uh, SF guys. SF guys are sometimes the fucking worst at, at times where they're like, they don't know you. They've never, they don't follow you on, on social media and I always push. I'll push hard. I'll be like, do you know Tim? Like, no. Do you follow him? No. Like, well, then what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. Like, oh man, he's using his tab. Have you heard this one too? Like he's using his tab to uh, do something, right? And you're like, okay, so explain this to me. And I, and I, I, I don't know if this is like an outward paced conversation we should be having, but I'm like, you go out and you do, and, and this has been my conversation with a lot of people. I'm like, Tim goes out and I think that he gives a very positive image of what Green Berets can accomplish in their life. Like you were a fighter, you're an entrepreneur, you, you're you a trainer, you're a dad, you're a teacher. You're like, you've got all these really cool fucking pieces of your life where, oh, by the way, none of them by themselves are easy to accomplish, even at, in a lifetime of endeavors. So I think from the community standpoint, whether it's like with, inside the veteran community, the special operations community, the SF community, there's a, there is an element, and we saw it on the teams a lot, where it's like, Fuck that motherfucker. And it and it used to see it a lot. And it dawned on me just recently. It was like that guy would get like a halo slot, right? Or a dive slot or whatever. It's like, what the fuck? Fuck that guy. <laughs> and you're like, it's fucking ATAR school, man. Like, you're gonna have a you're gonna have an opportunity to go. Like, just you know, keep your fucking nose clean and you know, don't get a dewey and don't bang the commander's wife. Like, you're probably gonna go. Like, <laughs> Don't be a douche. That's pretty easy. But there's what, what I'm going into is I was having this conversation with um, the two guys from the Daily Wire yesterday, which I fucking dearly love. And we were talking about the 80-20 rule. It's like 80% of the people are going to be really jealous of your accomplishments in life because they're too lazy to do them. 20% of the people are going to be like, nah, I'm a little bit jealous, but really I want to flip it around and go like, I'm really fucking stoked. It's like between 10 and 20% of those people are going to be like very positive and motivated that you did something incredible. They're going to be like fucking pumped. But there's like an 80-20 rule where it's there's a jealousy component to it where Tim makes a lot of people look bad. Where when I say that, how uncomfortable he, are you on this like I'm tirade a, of I'm like? Way, like <laughs> I know. I know. He's he's like, it's like, well, a lot of it's bringing true, and I'm like, Ooh, yeah, man, but it's not true. Wrong. Like, but you, right make, you make, you make a, super hot. <laughs> you make a lot of people look bad. I get you, fucking dude, and it's difficult when I say that. It's like you put a lot of fucking hard work in, and you you earn what you have. So it's like whether you're getting up and fucking banging out in the, in the gym or like going down to the border with group or doing whatever the fuck you're doing. Like, dude, you are a busy motherfucker. And what I love about it, because I know, I know you, is that I know you're fucking busy and I know you're outworking 99 out of 100 motherfuckers. So everything you get is exactly what you deserve because you fucking put in the work. So yeah. I'm super happy for you, man. Thank you. You're amazing. Um, I'm still pit sweating right now. Good. Um, you know, but then like, what do you do? My, my dad, um, you know, you, you can tell a man by how he treats the people that work with him and um, for him. And, you know, now that we're in positions where there is success, like what can we do with that? And I think that's the, the and that has always been, and that's the thing that nobody understands. You know, if, I, I'm never going to say what I donate to any organization. I'm going to never say how much time I spend on working for nonprofits. I'm never going to, that's nobody's, no, nobody's business ever. But when those, that little, that group of that jealous hater, um, they're, even on the teams, it was so dangerous and damaging because there's, First, you should be proud of that person. Mm -hmm. Second, it's going to make the team a better place because that person's going to come back with a skill. Let's say they got a sniper school yeah. slot. Awesome. Do you know what you're going to do for the next month that you come back here? You're going to cross train all of us with the current, current and newest material that is coming out of range 37. Fantastic. Can't wait to have you back on the team. You know, insert wh whatever the opportunity is for that individual that they earn that hard, the hard work and success. That I get to garner benefit from that. So not only am I a bad person for throwing that person under the bus or even worse, not just talking shit about them. In, in some instances, they'll be like, 
oh man, fuck that guy for getting that slot. You know, but man, I remember on that for full mission profile, he totally botched up the demo at the door. Right, right. Yeah. You know, you're yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. Now, now not only are you talking, you're not happy for him, but now you're talking shit about him. Yeah. You know, right. and like, and that's training. That's the point of going to training is right. to fail in training. So um, did we have corrective action for how he did that countdown and we fixed it? Yes, we did. Now, fantastic. There was a learning moment for all of us. It's not three initiate, it's three, two, one initiate. But we'll, we'll, we'll worry about that later. <laughs> well, what of? Or one. yeah, wait, wait, wait till the white side guys get in and then blow black side. No. Um, but, but where did that start? Where did this whole entitlement of, of people having to do something, for example, like you, you, and you that are at this level? And I see firsthand what you guys do for foundations. I've seen firsthand behind the scenes what you do. Because we we talk on a daily, like not daily basis, but when we get together, we catch up. And you don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. And you don't have to do that because nowhere in our contract that it say when you get out of the military, you got to give back to these nonprofits that are helping your community. Like it, there's nowhere that I've seen that says that, but you still choose to do it. Well, it- right. And and then you still have people who want to come in and say like, well, they don't do enough. They don't do shit. They have way more than this, but. Where, where does that stop or, or I, where do you... I don't know, man. Like, like, I would say that that's, there's a difference and the difference is like, I do have to do it, which is nobody has a gun to my head telling me I have to do it. But yeah. it's like it's like saying, well, I don't have to take care of my kids. Like, I mean, I don't have to technically, but I yeah, have to. It's, a it's like breathing. It's like anything sure. else. It's, it's sure. something you have to do. For a good person. For a good person. Because there's plenty of people that don't take care of the kids. There's plenty of people that come out person. that don't go back and give to the community that mm-hmm. built who they are and yeah. shaped how they they approach life. Um, so I'm not saying you're a good person. Don't no, don't I, think that. Because yeah. I have my, my <laughs> recent <laughs> gift here from Matt that is designed to lock things. Listen, if I learn one thing throughout the years is give the really dangerous guy in the room the biggest <laughs> weapon. The biggest fucking Dude, weapon. You see how quick yeah. I all, allied oh, up yeah, to yeah. Tim when he came back? Yeah. Like, good to see you. Here's a giant sword. Yeah. Dude, it's amazing. Now so, we have a fire team. It's just I'm, how it works. I'm bragging about my murder table in my office and it is it is becoming this entity of all the cool... I, I have like a legitimate Norse era um, hard armor piercing war hammer. Oh, wow. And then I have a battle axe that was built um, by a, like an right. old school Viking. And um, you know, like a throwing spear, boar spear, a Russian, like all the, all the cool things. And like the cooler the table gets, something that was cool is going to get moved off because right, right, something right. cooler just got introduced. Mm. Kind of like my book of Thank You for My Service. It was just like moved <laughs> off. And I put it on the Scars and Stripes. <laughs> Oh, that fell on the table. Scars and stripes. Look at that. Hey, I'm okay with it. That was like three years ago. No. Was it? I was really? solid. It's good. He's oh just keeps, damn. It's good. I love it, dude. It's is on great. point. Yeah. Well, when you're a New York Times bestseller, we'll just get have a book club together. Okay. You know? Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, hey, who said the dumbest guy in the room can write a New York Times bestseller? So I'm okay with it. Yeah, Ross Patterson. He's not here. <laughs> oh. 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 He's on a road a day. Shit, I'm gonna leave now before I feel he gets. Like everything's being can I borrow? This way. Can I borrow your fucking? <laughs> Why don't I go get mine? My direction. I can't turn. My neck's all fucked yeah. up. I can't turn this way to direct it. Then an omni turner. Should I leave? My neck is kind of jacked right now too. Um, I tried. I did something hard. I though. did do something dumb. Was uh, Austin? I'm sure your eyes are tracking. Has become the nucleus for all things martial arts on the planet. Yeah. Seriously, yeah. I, I don't know that. No. Is it really? No. So one through 20, the number one through 20 best grapplers on the planet have all moved to Austin in the past year. I'm wow. not talking like one, Seriously? two, three, and four. Yeah, I'm 30. talking one through 20. The four best teams on the planet all moved to Austin in the wow. past year. So this morning I walk in, you know, and um, there's one through six, right. the number one through six dude on the mat right now, like the current heavyweight champion, the current goat on the planet. And you're just like, this is not going to be great for my ego. <laughs> this, is gonna be, this is gonna be hard. Oh, Cody, Cody Garrett just moved to Austin too. We need to get Jim out here. We we gotta get fucking Jim. Who's Jim? Jim. He was just at your house. Jim. Jim was at my house. Is he? Never, oh, is, Jim Miller. God, yeah. Oh, 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 awesome. oh okay. yo, dude, Jim. Jim's the man. Sorry, sorry, Jim. Jim Miller. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, Jim. Great hunter. Great human. Great American. Great, great fighter. Yeah. yeah great. great human. All great things. We gotta get him Jim, out here. Oh, absolutely. I, I I love Jim because he he doesn't have the largest social media following nor like the biggest clout. But when you start to read 
the records that that dude has set with his career, specifically in the UFC. Because what he has the most wins, I believe, of all time in the yep. UFC right now. Yep. Um, and then I made something up there with submissions too. It's it's gnarly, like yep. his resume. And Did you just, listen to his Rogan? And he episode? has Lyme disease. Mm -mm. Like yeah, and he and I, we, that, we the, shared our mutual connection over lines. You too? Yeah. yeah, I got a turkey hunting last year in Missouri. Oh, damn. Uh, weird, I gave a turkey Lyme disease. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was it's weird. <laughs> I, I might have started COVID now that I think what about it. What was that? Not Prometheus. Promethean? The Prometheus. Not no, Prometheus. Permethrin. Oh, permethrin. Permethrin. Oh. It literally, they yeah. give it to you in the military. And it's like, that, this will give this, you cancer. If you get any of this on yourself, it will give you cancer. Here's a bunch of cans of it. Yeah. And they were like, and what do we do? Put it on everything yeah. that we have, but do not. Wait, what was that? I don't remember don't, that. You don't remember permethrin? Ticks hate it. Mosquitoes yeah. hate it. It's, it's like the, it's like the, the DEET times a thousand. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, it's, it's the core chemical in DEET that, is also the chemical that they would use in in um, but, Agent Orange. But like, yeah, no, no, it is. <laughs> no, no, it is. I know. It's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. Awesome. But he would be like two percent. We yeah. would get it, and it's like ninety eight yeah, yeah. percent it. <laughs> and they're like, take your clothes, hang it out hang in it a well out. ventilated place, yeah, yeah. spray it on your clothes, leave it for twenty hours, and we're like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then it's spraying your Copenhagen can like it's those little things you forget about sometimes, but yeah. I know because I hate mosquitoes. I just too. got a whole bunch of it, and uh, like the thing that I've been doing for the past few months, and and we're in by the water. And there's lots of bugs there, and there's lots of ticks there, mm -hmm. and and again the same thing as in Iraq and Afghanistan and South America, um, Africa. This that juxtaposition of like cancer, Lyme disease, right? Yeah, man. These are the options that the military affords you. Yeah. These are great choices that not many people mm -hmm. get to face. <laughs> I mean, that's the, a, that, that should be the follow-on chapter to a book. Cancer or Lyme deci <laughs> disease. <laughs> Decision of the day. It goes with your like, uh, oh, so you want to move to Fort Polk? Let me tell you about some great <laughs> other things. Yeah. Cancer or Lyme disease. <laughs> you a want few malaria? Things. I got you. Yeah. Oh, There's a few fever? things you're going to need. Yeah. Dengue fever? <laughs> got you. Um, uh, what's the, it? I, I, I got to ask you, so what's going on in the border? Because you're like fairly active in that or can you talk about it? I got to ask you. I can't say a word about it. Okay. So we can't say anything about that. I mean, I'm from the border. I can tell oh, you about it. Oh, yeah. man. I, I crossed the border. I'll tell you. <laughs> we'll delete that <laughs> you didn't then. catch me. Yeah. Americans should be paid attention. It is, mm. super, it is super important. We just had an amazing hero, uh, yeah. a Texas National Guardsman, okay. standing along the river as a, a young woman falls into the water. The only thing they found was his body armor and radio as he dumped they his gear. They found the body. They, found, yeah, they recovered yeah, the body two yeah. days later. Yeah, he ended up in Eagle Pass, dude. That's insane how- In Eagle Pass? Yeah. His body traveled Damn. well over, I can't remember the amount of miles, but he his body was found in Eagle Pass. That's insane. What a hero. A specialist. Yeah. Dude, this a specialist. Kid, little yeah, black kid. Yeah, not dude, a moment of hesitation. Like crazy. Boom, into this, the drink. This illegal was drowning. He jumped in, tried to go save that person, and then he ended up losing his life. Like it's, I mean, that's the soul of America, right? Yeah, there, right? And, and you know what the thing that pissed me off? CNN and CNBC, no one is reporting this kid losing his life. No one. I didn't even know about it. No one. So they, I, I was extra irritated, not just because so few people talked about it, because it, what, a, what a remarkable moment of heroism and courage, yeah. like self-sacrifice. Um, this isn't somebody going to save a combatant. This is, yeah. is, is anyone here Native American? Crispy. Uh, eh. Maybe, I don't know. So cool, yeah. we're all immigrants. Right. Yeah. And there are more immigrants coming across the border. How it should happen, that that that's an executive level policy yeah. thing that has to be figured out. But what we have is a specialist standing on the water and in a moment of crisis realizes that if he doesn't do something, somebody's gonna die. Die ju jumps in there. All coverage, um, when some border patrol are riding horses and using yeah. whips, which are called reins. Yeah. yeah. Like every everybody covers it for hours and pawn, hours on end. But then here is a story that could unite everybody talking about how incredible soldiers are and how hard this border situation and it is nuanced you know that is there's there's no single solution here and it, and it is the the subtleties of of how to fix this we could talk about it for months and months on end and not have a solution but one thing we know is there are american soldiers on the border doing amazing things and putting their lives on the line to try to protect people like can we just not talk about that no it doesn't go into the right confirmation now. bias it right? yeah. doesn't feed into the confirmation bias. Yeah. So it goes directly against the narrative and then they'll they'll be condemned by their own audiences that they've ultimately curated and created 
for airing a positive story about one, a U.S. soldier, and then two, something that's happening on the border that it also is, paints yeah. soldiers in a positive light. So they can't do it. They're just trapped by their own, yeah. their, their own audience because they'll backlash on them, which, hey, here is a bright spot in the news. Rachel Maddow is only going to be on once a week. So, oh, <laughs> uh, hey, really? if we could trim that yeah. back even more, yeah. you know what Maybe I mean? Zero times like, a week. Yeah. Go down to a, once a decade. I don't yeah. know. Like, <laughs> go on a vacation. I heard that on a... Uh, um, uh, Crystal and Sager had a story on it the other day. Uh, Tim's going to have hilarious. to use new deodorant after this show. He's just like, oh shit, I still do stuff, guys. Uh, yeah. You're like, fuck it. Jennifer Griffin, she's a Fox News correspondent. She's uh, one of the White House, like oh, yeah. full-time. Mm -hmm. she's, she's like one of the proper people. She, You know, if she's a dude, she'd have a bow tie and a monocle. You know, she has like a great vocabulary. And she just went to Ukraine with the nonprofit that I was in Afghanistan with. Um, she was also instrumental when uh, Benji Hall, one of the, the news correspondents for Fox, when he got blown up in Ukraine, she was the one that picks up the phone to call, how do I get a special operations person on the phone to go rescue one of my colleagues? Right. So as, as we're throwing tons of shade, man, there are some, as, as horrible as mainstream news media is and can be, um, there are still some people that care. And uh, not just care about, the propaganda or their narrative, but actually just care about reporting and people. Yeah. And uh, so as, as calloused as I'm becoming about how seen behind the curtain of, of how manipulative they really are, I also see these little gems of light be like, man, yeah. that, that woman's rad. Yeah. You know, give me more of hers. Cause Didn't Russia just released that Marine that they had captured. Um, they, they no, we traded the, them for a for Russian sh drug dealer. Oh, that's what it was. Yeah. yeah. It was a prisoner exchange. I mean, if you're selling drugs in Russia, let them. <laughs> no, no, he was selling, the Russian was selling drugs here. Oh. Right? And we had- He was arrested here? Here. And they took him over there to- Yeah, but he, he's like Russian cartel KGB oh, connected. Oh, yeah. And like our Marine was just over there like- On vacation, like yeah. taking pictures. So it's, it was a pretty good trade for them. Damn. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, can we take that back? Okay. Yeah. Can we? <laughs> like, who's, who, who's like the best football player right now and then trade them for like the worst basketball player? So, like right. Tom Brady for Colin Kaepernick. Yeah. Like, great, it was like, great comparison. You go. yeah. We got an American back. I'm cool with it. <laughs> yeah. American Marine. <laughs> oh, yeah. I did see that. That's yeah. what I was like. I didn't know if that was, I literally saw it this morning. Yeah. Got him. That's crazy. Got him. Yes. What else is going on? Crispy, what, I mean, what else do you want to talk about? Me? Uh, yeah. Not have much going on. Just being crispy. You're just being what's, Omar? What's, what's a day in the life Work. of crispy look like? Just uh, hunting things? Wake up, stretch a little. Then like yoga? Yeah. Well, Pilates. I like details. I'm doing Pilates because okay. my wife's going to be an instructor. I don't even really sarcastic because I like mm. Pilates. Yeah, no, I, I, dude, my wife's like getting certified right now and it's been helping me a lot. <clears> like <throat> I stretch, I'm more flexible and then like put my leg on then I look at the mirror and I'm like I'm fucking awesome uh, you just keep blowing just past things I know you're, you're you're pointing but um so your wife's pretty hot she's she's a gorgeous lady oh, yeah. how yeah, did like, this work out because I'm real it's just not making sense compute. Yeah. I think we're yeah. all kind of confused yeah all of us I, I are confused and she's like sweet she's and very nice. a really good person like little teacher yeah. like, you know, I, don't know. I yeah. don't know we met nobody and, knows that's what I want to understand it, not, not, it, not really oh, more like yeah, oh, un, un poquito. Yeah, un poquito. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. She's just like you treat her right. She oh every time, bro. Was it like yeah. a cowboy hat? You were wearing it. He does. She was, was, I was yeah. wearing jeans and, okay. and boots and the hat right. when I met her. So okay, I don't yeah. know. Might have been it. How long you guys have been married for? What two years now? Two years. Been together seven. Damn! Look at you. Yeah. So fun fact about Pilates. <laughs> Coming back to that. Come on. Uh, he was the. Guy that developed the calisthenics program for the United States Army in World War II. Yeah. Um, uh, a little tidbit. She's going to kill me if I don't remember his name. It was uh, Pilates. Well, that's his last name, but yeah. his first name was. <laughs> it's his name, Pilates. <laughs> yeah. Oh. It's like Joseph Pilates. Joseph Pilates. There you go. Oh, my God. That's yeah. funny. It's, you know, <laughs> I, I got to. Dude, it was crazy. He got, he was wounded. <laughs> he was wounded in World War II and was in the hospital, and they weren't doing any like, um, physical rehab or therapy or anything for those guys. And he was taking the springs out of the bed and making all these contractions and, and contractions and Contraption. contraptions. Yeah. Uh, sorry, like I'm contractions. Mexican. My vocabulary is not that big. And he was like teaching all these guys how to like, you know, do different things with the apparatuses that he made up. 
and they were healing faster. They were getting stronger. Like it was, it, he had a like turnaround rate of all these guys that were wounded, getting them back out. And then that's how he started it, mm. being in the hospital with just equipment in the hospital. It was crazy, like super cool. All right. So we've yeah. made it to, you wake up, you yeah. stretch, you do some Pilates. He, he does Joseph Pilates. Okay, we, Joseph we, Pilates. He goes full name with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Joseph Pilates. Not really, but yeah. Then you go shoot some video. Yeah, man. Just kind of see whatever's on the schedule and then go from there. I mean. Walk up, deadlift 600. I don't do that anymore. Show Tim look. It was yeah, 100, like but I don't do that anymore. You don't do that anymore? Yeah. Now, man, I honestly, like, the pain was getting really bad. Like, my joints were hurting. Like, I I tore my, my chest uh, muscle trying to bench 500 one time. Mm. And then I got stubborn and one did it again, like, without really properly healing. Benched it, put it down. I said, I'm done. Walked away and, um, dude, I've been, I feel great ever since. Did, did, um, stem cells has been fucking kicking ass. Like, feel great. Is it working? Yeah, man. Like, how, like, where did you, where did you have it done? So Columbia. I went to Colombia. Yeah. Okay. Med Medellin, Colombia, which, um, Medellin. Was super cool that's because, where the good stuff is. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I stayed away from that. Um, but super cool because you go down there and I got 150 million stem cells pumped into me. And the max that you can get in the States is 15,000. How do they inject it in you? I did IV. Because they can, oh. they can oh. do, like for Matt, like I was telling Matt, like his knee's pretty fucked up. They can literally come in and inject all 100 million on his knee so that can recover super fast. Is that fast. what you keep asking me for? Because you keep asking me to inject some stem cells in you. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, no, that's I read the directions <laughs> wrong. And oh. it, I thought it was rectally because it goes right to your knee. <laughs> and so I, okay. was, I was misinformed <laughs> on- Is this a health on, issue? I, I just thought you <laughs> yeah. were- Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so can, can they put it anywhere? They can. So, so bald so spot. Yeah. IV. Balding spot. Yes. Um, ego. Uh, no, <laughs> no, maybe. Okay. I don't know. Penis. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, well, those th th were, were two yeah. for three so far. He's, he's just wondering. He's, a, he's, he's a, no, no he's real inquired. reason. Yeah. I'm just curious. For a friend? Yep. Asking, yeah. for, a friend. Asking for a friend. <laughs> so IV. Yeah, so it just goes through your entire body? So that's called a wellness. So IV, it hits everything in your body that's torn from like meniscus, torn you, muscles, really? all that stuff. Yeah, it hits everything. It's crazy because like... Well, it was it hit everything. It's essentially just, isn't it just like an inflammatory or anti-inflammatory system throughout where just taking all that stress off your, your main pretty system, much, right? Pretty much, yeah. 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 So, so significant improvement. So when did you have this done? I had it done last July, June, July. How long did it take for you to feel the difference? The next day. Are you serious? Dude, was it like your stem cells? No. They, the general stem cells. No, so so there's the way like that they do millions it Millions of little babies swaying around. Yeah, pretty you. much. So they, wow. the way that they do it is they they're had a baby in me. You know, they approach females in, in Colombia that are pregnant. They go through a test to make sure they're healthy, everything's okay with them. Yeah. Once the once they're eight or nine months pregnant, they check them and the baby again to make sure they're all healthy. When the baby's born, they grab, you know, the uh, umbilical cord. Yep. They grab it from there. They test that to make sure that everything's clean. Then they multiply them. Then they check to make sure that that's clean, and then they check you, and then they give them to you. Wow! There's there's an extensive thing that goes through. The cool part about it is that they keep certain amount of stem cells on the side, so when the mom is ready to come back and get them uh, and her, they give them to her to help her recover from a pregnancy, from having the kid. Like um, like it boosts her system, and like all these crazy things that they give back to the person that donated them. That's pretty right. That's super cool. One of my favorite groups of people on the planet. Are Mexicans? Yeah, I mean, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Babies. There's no way that I can answer that question besides yes. So thanks. You got the bathroom over there, bro. <laughs> um, moms, like a year after delivery, um, I was just at the Go Ruck event with uh, oh, yeah. Jason Saw McCarthy. That. What a great person. Fucking great dude. Yeah. Yep. The uh, I love seeing Green Berets just kill it and he is absolutely killing it. And uh perpetuating the same soft truth. He sent me, so I had like this keynote and he sent me passive aggressive, like, I mean, talk about whatever you want. You know, it's, it's your, it's your speech, but can uh, you talk about the soft truths? You know, <laughs> and, like what a badass to, yeah. to be like, first of all, and then a huge event. It was fantastic. But I'm walking around and these moms, they had the front pouches. They had like the side pouches. Yeah. They had like the back pouches. They had the the little like dual um, baby thing. And like yeah. these women, super fit. They're a year after having their babies. They're off doing a go ruck event with <laughs> fifty five pounds on their back, walking like twelve miles, and they're toting their their beautiful little kids along the way. They're back to being like this really positive force for good. Like what badasses? Yeah. 
Um, I've never delivered anything out from between my legs. And then a year later, after my whole entire body has crushed its organs, my hormones are jacked. Yeah. Do I look better than I did before the baby? Like badass bitches. Yeah. Well, men can give birth now. I don't know if you've been watching like Netflix. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. It's, it's yeah, a whole yeah. thing now. Uh, so well, you've been, maybe, sir. maybe uh, someone needs to put a baby in Tim. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I go first? It's biologically feasible, apparently, now. We've modified science. Yes. Hey, here's a question. Have you done the, the uh, Stella Ganglion block? Have you tried that? I have not, but I did talk to uh, Steve's daughter. What, okay. That English? Yeah. Wait, what is that? So her and it's I... A, um, so they go in and they, they perform the a block on the Stella. Yeah. Your, and I, I don't need oh, exactly oh, know oh, the science. Oh, the Stella block. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, yeah. sorry. Yeah. I, you said that fast. One of my buddies... One of my buddies just had it done. Well, actually, lots yeah. and lots of guys have had it done because I'm, I'm having problems sleeping. Soon. Like, you know, everybody has problems sleeping yeah. for the most part. Uh, you don't, which is, you know, that's that explains yeah. a lot. I need a CPAP uh, I do too. I've got like, uh, you know, Motrin PM, yeah. CBD, melatonin, magnesium. I, I just make a big cocktail and yeah. just like put it in there and just, all right, let's go. And yeah. uh, I get yep. a solid five hours. It's great. Super healthy. <laughs> um, super yeah, healthy. I do want to try that. So I've been talking to her because I want to do it because for some weird reason, like every, so when I had stem cells through the next day, my prosthetic was falling off of me of how much like the inflammation of my body went Seriously? down. Dead serious. Whoa. I had, when I got back, I waited another month before I got fitted for another prosthetic. And I waited too long because I was swimming in that thing. So I ended up getting another one and it stayed like that. Um, but, but it's been so beneficial, but I want to do that just for the simple, like everything that I used to heard, it no longer heard. Like before, like I got up out of bed one day and I sat up and I'm not a very emotional person. And I started crying and my wife's like, are you okay? Like, what's wrong? And I'm like, today's the first day that I woke up in 10, 15 years that I haven't felt pain. Mm -hmm. And she That's goes, cool. what? And I'm like, yeah. And like, she just hugged me from behind and she started crying. She's like, are you serious? I'm like, I'm dead serious. I'm like, Ugh. like, I don't feel pain. Like, I don't feel anything. Like, I'm, I'm like, is this what it feels like to feel normal again? Like, mm -hmm. what is this? And she's like, yeah, honey. And I was like, I'm going to the gym. Like I went to the gym and like just had a is that like, is that, like a, is that a cute or is it like how long did the, the it was three months three after, months after and then you started it. feeling yeah. some inflammation back so about three months okay yeah. interesting what's their suggested uh, like stem cell like programming is it every six months once a year once a year it, once a year um, okay and I'm going back in September um just because I I didn't they're so busy I couldn't go back in June like we did last year or July or whatever um and I'm just so busy that I I couldn't but I'm going back in September. And from what they said, it's just I already had the first dose that came in and repaired a bunch yeah. of stuff. The second dose is just, just going to get me like, mm. let's go. So, that's awesome. Let's go. Yeah. That's, I'm pretty pumped about that. And like, just to get my buddy like reset back to zero, because obviously there's still like a bunch of like health issues and stuff from the burns and the, and the amputation and all what that stuff. What do you mean? That I'm, like, what? so... Like, like, you know, like about? just regular stuff from oh, being burned. Just like regular yeah. stuff after yeah, yeah, yeah. hundred like, surgeries. I, I will say, if people yeah. know this about you. Too much. Like, you know? I'm gonna, give, I'm gonna give Crispy some clout here because, like, oh, we, 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 well, no, because yeah, yeah. we, we've hung out enough over our life over the last years. At, like, but every time I've like slept at in the same house or something, like this dude wakes up every morning bleeding. Like he's just bleeding all the time, and I don't <laughs> think people know the consistent amount of like pain and, and injuries because it's not like an amputation where it's, you know, it's, it's more of like a mobility issue. Yeah. Right. And I'm not discrediting that in the slightest. I'm simply saying you deal with that. And then on top of that, all of the burns, like burns don't fucking heal. Like you're bleeding right now. Oh yeah. This, right. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm like, I, dude, the fact that you stay so motivated and active and, and it's like hyper impressive. I'm not trying to have a dick sucking uh, fucking new convention at this table. Right um, you posted on Instagram a photo of your sheets yeah. Yeah. and it yeah. was disgusting and it I was, blocked you for a was. month. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> don't ever gross. do that again. Don't do that again. It's gross. Because um, I, uh, I haven't fully emotionally recovered from it and I have post-traumatic stress. <laughs> because you those of, sheets because we're no longer used. Hey. hey, there might be a weird thing out there. Like CrispysBloodySheets.com hey, or something. Listen, I just, we just bought some land. I'm building a home. Maybe I can make some money after and that. And, and, and I mean, I'd like to 
compliment Matt. I mean, I don't know if you know what it's like, but he tore his meniscus. <laughs> uh, Crispy uh, wouldn't know what a knee injury is like. He, he wouldn't. He's he, 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 like, I know what you're going through. Hey, I know what you're going through, bro. Yeah, like, Cheers, bro. That was my joke the whole through. time with Clint Trials. Like, Clint, I'd, I'd complain about my knee, but he, he wouldn't know what it's like because <laughs> you don't have knees anymore. The weird thing was, the weird thing was, just like, I love you, Clint. Love you, buddy. Clint was standing there, yeah, like in the as we're at Skydive Arizona, standing there, yeah, and. I saw both Matt and him talking, and then pretty soon they were wrestling over the uh, Clint's cane, and yes. Matt took it away. Was like, dude, yeah. my knee's fucked up. Yeah. I really need this. But, I was like, you have a wheelchair, yeah, Clint. You have a wheelchair. I need a cane. He's like, you don't need and, this. And two legs. I got batteries on them. What yeah. do you get? Give me that. Yeah. Yeah. My, my favorite part about Clint. I mean, I love I love Clint so much. He is the salt of the earth. Yes. But in that video, goes. Oh fuck! Right? Yeah, I know. Yeah, because he's like, he's like, son of a bitch. I thought you fucking died. And we're gonna have to bury you. Know, like his, his monotone has bro, voice. I'm like, that's who it was. Oh, I, sorry I, to scare I, you, bro. Oh, I shit. didn't feel good. I know. Everybody yeah. watching that was like, this fucking dude is gonna burn in. <laughs> like everybody's like, oh. Fuck, did you, did you, did you no do it to, to like later? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's, uh, we shit. talked about that last yeah. one. I just uh, some some bad comms and, gotcha. and just, my radio didn't transmit, so I was stubborn ranger and I was waiting for the instructor to essentially be like flare, flare, flare. Yeah, flare yeah. And I should have just done it myself because the radio didn't work. And so I was like, I'll just go into the ground, you know. <laughs> oh, um, yeah, so sure. well, you're used to like a round where you're like, ah, it's not a big deal. Put it in the wind, fucking peel off, whatever. Who yes, yeah. Well, yeah. but you're not. It's it's probably a bad thing. I have so many stack line jumps because it was mm. it was like you know oh I can just run in the ground on PLF. No, it didn't, uh, it didn't work. It didn't work. Yeah. It's all right. I got off so easy, dude. Good. Like so easy. I'm glad you're okay. How Thanks, fun dude. is falling though? I, I mean, I love it. I, yeah. I'm I'm oh, yeah. trying to go to Bernie or not Bernie uh, San, Marcus. San Marcus right now. Like not right now, but this week. Let me know. Free falls the best. It's was like good flying. Friend of mine. It's so you're fun. Really? Yeah, yeah. I'll hook you up. And Lone Star. We're going down. Uh, yeah. Andy Andy Stumpf and. Um, Mike Glover and I are going to be in San Diego next month for a couple of days. We're going to go down. Nice. Andy's going to fucking throw us out of a plane. Probably like try to fucking kill us. I don't know. Mike Glover no, and he's, I are. He's, like, he's, he's Andy. What, who here loves Andy? Yeah, he's no, yeah, not of course. I, I mean, he's, he's, the, no, he's, he's the nicest so asshole I know. I love him. Yeah, he's the <laughs> nicest, <laughs> nicest asshole, asshole I know. Yeah. Yeah. Have you, does he ever like drop into your comment section on any posts and it's all you, time he he's the he always says he's the CEO of Black Rifle Coffee. Yeah. It's great. <laughs> uh, I it has become very evident and clear that you never want to be on the receiving end of like the debate in a comment section with him. Mm -hmm. He is a force. He is a force of indescribable power. <laughs> I like his wine reviews. Dude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he tells he himself the only uh, sommelier in Whitefish, Montana, which is, it's not true. It's like, I mean, he just like makes shit up and does it. It's fucking hilarious. You're like, he's he's super safe. On, I've, I've asked him if he like wanted to help me base jump and he's like, no. I was like, like no, no? He's like, yeah, like hard no. I'll never help anyone do any base jumping or wing shooting. And I was like, why is that? He's like, because my friends are dead. Mm -hmm. like, gotcha. uh, I think he might be on the spectrum a little bit because he you is. Think? Yeah, because he's always like, no. You're like, <laughs> What? Does why? Know, why are Bill? you like? Why? 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 I want to do it. No. No. I'm not going to do that. No. After <laughs> skydiving, uh, base jumping is a hard no for me. Here is a <laughs> fucking, hard no. Here's a great story. So Travis Pastrana, uh, one of his one of his friends, they were in Twin Falls, Idaho, on that yeah. bridge where everybody jumps off. Gorgeous. And the guy's never been skydiving, and he tells Travis, he's like, "Hey, I want to go base jumping." And Travis's like, "You okay?" Sure. He goes, but I'll only do it if I can do a gainer off this bridge. So Travis is like, sure, because Travis is full send. He doesn't give a fuck. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. He'll, like, he'll, he'll, like if you want to do you, something you and you have the risk, you have you no do talent or background yeah. in it, he yeah. doesn't care. He'll be like, great. So he puts a shoot on this dude. And did he know? He doesn't, he doesn't even, he was asking him how to use the toggles on how to land as he's stepping up on the bridge to jump off. That's how fucking crazy this dude is. And he did a Golly. gainer and he's Ooh. like, he's like, well, how do you do this? And Travis is like, we well, just reach down and grab the thing, pull it. He's like, but don't be a pussy. Like, don't pull it too early, you know? So only time this guy's ever jumped in his entire life. The first time he does, he's a, he, he's a professional motocross yeah, yeah. guy. So he's relatively good in the air with his body. He, he, and he has like no fear. But he's like, yeah, does a gainer, pulls low because Travis told him not to be a pussy. <laughs> And then, and then rides that thing into the river, and he's like, "Okay, cool, that was fun." He's okay. only jump he's ever done. He goes, and the only time I will ever jump out of an airplane. I was talking to him the other day. He was like, "If I can jump without a shoot, so I got to go to a 
uh, a foreign country. Yeah, but he wants to do it. He wants to one-up Travis because Travis had like 100 or 200 jumps when he did it. He's yeah. like, I want my first jump out of an airplane to be with how to shoot. <laughs> I was like, you better, you better spend some tunnel time. Oh, you better spend man. some tunnel time. I don't think tunnel times. Do you like the tunnel before jumping? Yeah, it I helped love it. It helped, helped us out a lot. Yeah. Dude, When we once you're like so stable in that tunnel, like the second you get in the air, you're like, oh my God, this is so much easier. Like that's it's what- way we, harder to fly in the tunnel because yeah. you're surrounded by things that you, yeah. the, the, the yeah. grace and forgiveness of, of space is not existent. And I think it gives you that level, at least for me, the, of comfortability where I'm like, okay, as long as I get my arch, like I'm solid and I know that I can go left, right, back, forward. I can, and so after that, it's just a matter of getting my pilot yeah. shoot out and then not running my canopy in the ground. If we but jump in September, is that the plan? Yeah, until then uh, we'll have to spend a bunch of time in the tunnel with our gear. Oh, yeah. I'm just pushing a pallet. I don't know about you guys, but that bitch is going out and I'm going out after. Yeah, I like okay. that idea. You guys can do whatever you want. Hollywood. You, you, you can take a pallet out, You can out, jump dude. whatever you want. I just want. didn't know. You did not clearly communicate what the expectation was. I thought I was running a backpack. No way. I thought I was running a front pack. No way. Man, that ain't fun. We're going to push a skid and I'm going to go dudes? in after it. That's We're all, all gonna gonna static out with combat equipment, okay? okay. <laughs> <laughs> the 1940, uh, the, the the weapons carrier. Was it the 19? What was it? Yeah. Oh, what is Yeah, the big old green guy. Yeah. I still have that thing. Really? You yeah. still have it? Yeah. Yeah, so it'll be, I, I was like, fuck no, man, I'm pushing pallets. I'm going to load up a bunch of 50-gallon drums and fucking strap them onto a pallet and throw that thing out of the back. I don't give a shit. Wait, like, am I going to this outcome? Or um, can you jump? No. I mean, well, like, I mean, we were going to invite a yeah, lot of people, I but I, now it's just, it's off now. The... <laughs> Hey, you know what? It's cool because me, me, you know what? Hey, I'll roll with you and just come up in no, ATVs. Because like, oh. your, your dad's coming into town next you're month, seen. and I'm taking them helicopter hog hunting, and you're not invited. Uh, me and thank Ned, you. Me and Ned are going. No, thank no, you. No, thank I you. Appreciate, no, you're not no, I appreciate no, you're you not doing welcome. that because it's more like yesterday. a Make a Wish Foundation for me for you guys to fucking go <laughs> <laughs> on your own. <laughs> fucking <Savage>. a. <laughs> He's like, Savage. he calls me. He's like, I don't know if I can go and afford it. I was like, Ed, you're not paying anything. Just get here. And he goes, Cool. I was like. Oh, we'll he's such a fucking martyr. I was like, we'll just have, I, I don't we'll know. Just have, I don't know if I can afford it. Yeah, like, I was like, like, we'll just have. Our, our dads are the same. I was like, we'll have Ed. I was like, we'll have fucking Evan pay for your flight. And he's like, okay. okay. He has a company <laughs> card. Yeah, I got a, he, my company. Like, what the fuck do you mean? Like. I'm, anyway. listen, I'm gonna take the, that playbook too. My dad does the same thing, where he's like, "Well, if I could afford another red dot, I'd really need it for the safety yeah. of my house." And I'm like, yeah. "Is this you asking me for money?" God, I'm never asking my son for money. No, but if if you have an extra red dot laying around, <laughs> I'm like, "Fuck, man!" I just noticed Hank Williams Jr. touring bus was on sale. If I just had, <laughs> if I just had the extra, at least they do that. My dad comes to my house. He opens the safe. He goes. Oh, I don't have one of these. And then by the time he drives home, my guns are gone. Yeah. My, my dad yeah. flies into town. I love that we're all just like dunking on our dads. Yeah. He flies you in with an bastard. extra empty suitcase. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> so he lives with gear. He leaves. Dude, my with dad does this 11 same pounds shit of ammo. house, bro. 11 pounds of ammo. Of Which is exactly how much you can travel with. Yeah. With, um, it's, it's poundage, not, not, no, it's um, amounts. Pounds. No. So it's pounds. Yeah. It's pounds. 11, 11 pounds, pounds of ammo. It has to be in the original or has to be either in the original container or a packaging that is designed so, to transport so, ammo. Yeah. Um, so it can be loose rounds. Yeah. Um, if you live in a place where maybe you have to have an ammo card to go buy ammo, yeah. uh, ugh, uh, Wait, which is, is that, one of the many reasons. Is California? That yeah, it's yeah. a thing in many oh, places. Yeah. I don't yeah, know. It's I don't, a, it's I don't travel those places. But uh, so an empty bag, he arrives in Texas and that bag is like, I mean, he's... <laughs> Jumping on it. Yeah. Yeah. You're lucky your dad <laughs> flies in. Mine drives four hours and he comes with an empty freaking truck and leaves with meat from my from my freezer. And I complain that all of my dad. He takes, he'll come in, he's like, What is that? I'm like, Neo guy. He goes, Oh, I don't have none of that. I'm like, what yeah, is that? Yeah. I was like, that's elk that and that next to it is axe. He's like, I don't have none of that. Lives with this cooler full I do of love meat. That. Yeah, dude, I I love it, bro. Cause like we didn't grow up hunting at all. Like we didn't have money. To go hunt growing up, and now that you know, you got a little bit of, of coin in my pockets, so I can go hunt and do stuff like that. I love that he gets to come and do that kind of stuff. And my dad went moose hunting with me in Alaska. We've gone gator hunting in Florida and Louisiana. We've hunted all over Texas. Uh, I'm taking him to Kansas this year to go kill a deer over there. Wow. So like these memories that we're making, I I don't care. My dad comes in and says, I want to take your truck here, dude. Take yeah. your, take the fucking truck. I don't care. I don't know what the like, love languages are. I, I know there's like some, but like one of mine is is like 
cooking for somebody, mm-hmm. um, whatever that, that it attributes Acts to. Acts of service. Okay, there it is. Um, and when, especially <laughs> how connected you are to like that meat. Yeah. You're like, somebody travels oh, in yeah. from yeah, yeah. some crazy place. You open that freezer and it's like, do you guys want axes? Do you want elk? Mm-hmm. Are we going to do some bison? Okay, are you weird? Like, because I feel the same way. Like, because your point, my dad will come over. He came over like... Th- a couple weeks ago, but I gave him, because I caught that swordfish, so I gave him like three pounds yeah, of swordfish. Yeah, yeah. I gave him some bison and then something else. But it was like a very fulfilling moment. Like, I killed all that yeah, shit. Like, yeah, I, 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 I got yeah, that. It gets That's me mine. in the feels. Like, yeah. like, I catch some feelings well, from it. was it. a stag that you killed, wasn't well, it? Well, one of my uh, favorite memories yeah. of Matt's dad and him is when you cooked that, was it a, a brisket? No, no, it was, it was prime rib. Prime rib. Yeah. And Matt's dad was like He's a cutting one. into it and he was like, well, somebody would have listened to me on how to cook this shit, uh, but they didn't fucking uh, listen to me. Uh, oh, I guess I'll just throw this in the garbage. Uh, so bad. Wait, and I, I'm sitting there going, ha, 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 more, Roger. More. Bring the heat. I fucking hey, love it's, it's funny because, <laughs> not Rush. like a little bit about that. Like, you know, I, I think you've met my dad in passing, yeah. and my dad is kind of a goofball like I am, but man, he is a conservative, stern father. And if his you don't fucking, listen to him, awesome, bro. It, if exactly. you don't listen to him, same thing. He'll cut in to be like, "Well, I guess I have a fucking idiot son that can't learn <laughs> yeah. how to cook the fucking thing at 220 it, degrees." I'm like, "It was like I ruined Thanksgiving, Dad." Yeah. It was like the most passive, aggressive, aggressive shit aggressive, aggressive. I've been around in so long, and I was like, "Cool, I want to oh, meet we fight a lot. It's great in a good way." Yeah. Is it- I, I love his dad. Like I, I, you know, I travel a lot, I drive all over Texas, and I always call and check up on him, like your dad too. But I don't tell you that I talk to your dad because. Yeah. I always fuck with you him. Talk to my dad. Well, I don't have your dad's number, but I call Matt's dad and I'm like, hey, Roger, what are you doing? He's like, well, you know, here at home, yeah. having some whiskey. Yeah. yeah. And he's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm driving San Angelo to go kill some axis. And he's like, how long does that drive? I'm like, three hours. And he's like, hold on. He'll go grab his guitar and he starts fucking playing songs. What do you want to listen to next? And he just fucking goes. Sounds like, like him. Two hours on the phone, and I'm like, really? "All right, Roger, yeah." I was like, "I gotta, I gotta go piss and fill up." And he's like, "All right, call me back." And then, did I get back on the road? Call him back, and he'd be my traveling buddy. Like, yeah, yeah, we'll just, just fuck around now. Now Ed's coming into town. I'm gonna see if Roger wants to go do that with well, us. I, I've told my dad a hundred. I've told my dad a hundred times. We we have we have a lease here. Yeah, yeah. Found a hundred times. Yeah. All he has to do is come down and like. Well, there's there's, there's no hogs. blinds or feeder set up here. Yeah, there is. There is. It's twelve hundred oh. acres. But anyway. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, you're right. There one isn't. person and you go set up and there's no animals out there's there. Nothing yeah, nothing there. there. Wing, nothing. nothing. So I learned there. my so I learned my lesson. I want to this is very informational for the audience is um a tragedy struck my household about 2 weeks ago. I lost an entire freezer of bison. No. Uh, again, I swear to god, third the time. Second time. Third right? time, oh, third right? Time. Third, this is the third time it happened. So, first time was a GFI switch. So I learned my lesson on that one. And yeah. also I learned on that, the GFI on your um, actual circuit breaker, you have to turn that off as well. Okay, oh. so never plug into a GFI switch because it'll go out. Second, wife left the freezer door open. Oh. Third one, someone else left the freezer door open. But what I found out was the freezer, it pushed and depressed the little like sensory thing. So it didn't beep at me. And oh, just enough, and it was a crack because oh. someone, the thing was, it, it was a cheaper freezer. So when he slammed it, it opened a little bit. Uh. And then I woke up, the next day I came in there and there's just blood all over the ground. All oh, of me no. was rotten. So oh, note to self, don't be a cheap shit because I didn't buy one of the yep. Wi-Fi ones. They have freezers yep, now that will text right. you plus or minus five degrees. Wait, so I'm what? Like, yep. Yeah. Yep. And because some one of my honey buddies like, hey, you ain't got the Wi-Fi shit on your damn phone, you dumbass motherfucker. You're yeah. losing old animal. I'm like, I know. I just Was did. Thank John? you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. You're, so don't, learn don't, a lesson. Don't oh, go cheap sh- on the freezer. Well, yeah. dude, it's brutal because at the time you like, you know, you save or whatever to buy an animal or you harvest the animal. My bison that I went and shot up at Champion Ranch. Um, have it processed. Have it processed. I mean, dude, I'm like, I'm a lot of money yeah. in that animal. Yeah, 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 thousands, of dollars, thousands, thousands of dollars. Thousands of dollars into that. And, and that's a year worth of food. Yep. That's like clean eating. That's what we make all of like our, our chili and our, and our patties and Bread our jerkies or hunter sticks. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. everything that sustains me. So it was, it was sad. Yeah, so I'm not a conspiracy uh, theorist, but I'm telling everyone that there are food shortages coming. They, so uh, there are. Yeah, yeah, they are. Yeah, there are. They've already it's, not for us. Yeah. Not yeah, but, no, no. Well, maybe for us if if we are bad with our freezers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for me, I better get out of the ranch. Yeah. Now. Yeah. So yeah. Funny, go? I have a friend, Hasim Farid, and um, he does refrigerations for hospitals. And oh, wow. the vaccine, the COVID vaccine, you have to keep it a very specific temperature. And um, so all hospitals, not that this is illegal 
because it's not. I'm sure there are plenty of laws protecting them to do this. All hospitals are retrofitting all of their freezers with new COVID compliant freezers. Oh, God. Yeah. Well, these old freezers, old, they're like a year old and are $100,000 that keeps it at negative 150 degrees. Those are available. Are you kidding me? No, I'm not oh, kidding you. Oh, shit. I mean, maybe they're, yeah. Are they so my buddy, Hasin Freed, I love you, bro. Um, this guy, first of all, the name, he signs up for a Sheepdog Response course to come to one of our Protector Ones. And I see the name Hasin Freed and I click on it. And there's this picture of this very... Um, He's got the full beard. He's got the full thing. Not like brown Mexican skin, but like yeah. brown Middle Eastern skin. Right. And, totally um, different. and it was hard to discern whether his pro gun photos were pro gun or if he's like dangerous. Right. So he shows up to the range and my staff descend on him like a pack of hyenas. And they're like, hey, what are you doing? Like the total shark tank at RI, yeah, like yeah. the first day of ranger school, all of them are, are just circling around this poor guy. <laughs> and um, he's like, hey, what's up guys? And like the total Texas um, accent and hill country boy attitude. And uh, they're like, hey, where are you from? Like uh, Dallas. And they're like, what do you do? He's like, I sell medical equipment. <laughs> and they're like, uh, how'd you get the name? Hasin Farid. He's like, uh, so the last name came from my dad and the, my middle name came from my mom. And uh, then they named me Hasin. And they're like, <laughs> cool. So you're good. He's like, I'm just excited to do this training. You know, we're like, all right, everything's fine. Well, he's the one that just gave me this new freezer from one of these hospitals and it's in our sheepdog response building. And it's like, he'd Cerakoted the whole entire thing. Yeah. And it has like the Wi-Fi thing. It has, like, the alarm. Alarm. We're building a house and I definitely want one of Dude, those. You gotta, you yeah. gotta do it. You know what else is in the uh, sheepdog response building? This is going that. And there's a black, black rifle, rifle coffee. Yeah. There. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, Logan everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Three Logans. Three Logans. Three Logans. Yeah. There's, where are you on my wall? I, uh, I left that up to one of the most incompetent well, they hate people you. in the company. <laughs> That's what it is. Dan Horgan. <laughs> Dan was like, do you know who we shouldn't put on the wall? The and owner then, of the company. Did I make the wall up there? I haven't seen it. There's no. like one picture of you. And three Logans. But three Logans. Three and Logans. not like little Logans. Like No, I Logan, saw the one. It's like his face is just dead like weird. Center. Yeah, it's weird. Like, like who designed that? I don't know. Anyway, we'll figure that Dan out. Is there a Dan Logan thing? I yeah, think, I think so. Yeah, I think those guys are touching, yeah, they're, they're, touching yeah, they're, dinglings. They're, you know what I mean? They're docking. docking. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're... Yeah. I'm serious. No, yeah. No, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. We'll find out. <laughs> it's like the old army here. Here's, don't ask, don't tell. So yeah. what Logan and Dan do in the, in their the privacy of their bedroom, we don't care, you know? Just don't yeah. don't so stink up the office. Here's a question because I got to keep current on my firearms. You guys are firearms heads. What are you shooting these days? What do you like? Yep. So I can't really talk about it. God damn it. Okay, we'll really? talk about it. I can. So Tim. <laughs> Wait, which can one? I? No? Yeah, you can. Oh, say. No, we can't. We can't. We can't. No, we can't. So on me is a prototype of a new concealed carry that is going to be similar to one of the weapons I designed for oh, FN. the one that we... Okay. The one, that I wasn't going to say the name. You shot that one. Yes. You shot it. How say. sick is that? That's freaking dope. Yep. Yeah. Flat competition yeah. trigger, out Dude, of the box, the, the muzzle break, the, all the, the things comp, that you want. The comp is is so awesome to take off as a cripple dude. Right. How, as an able person, it's going to be just mm -hmm. like, oh, that's dope. It's just uh, easy to rotate it, off or what? Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's a quick detach we'll comp? About this. A, so it's a quick detach that yeah, stops time. Sorry, Christina. What? Yeah. Yeah. Great. Yeah. yeah. It's engineers. Yeah. I, I fancy myself a, a fairly <laughs> smart weapons person. And I was like, that's hey, genius. Hey, Tim. Who did this? I was like that. Yeah. I, I got you on this. So I was telling Tim out there as well is, uh, so rappers have like, like Jordan collections, right? That's what they do. Like shoe yeah. collections. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, that's yeah. their thing. Weird some jewelry some too sometimes. Jewelry, jewelry and that whole jewelry. like, check it out, right? Cars. Not art. Yeah. Oh, cars. cars, yeah. Cars, yeah. But but I like old school cars. cars. Yeah. My Chevy's Shady almost cars. done. But I've realized that I'm going to make the dopest Glock collection of all time because I'm a Glock guy. I own about 20 and I went into Mason's and I bought six more. And so I, I'll have about... Eight going to DEFCON here in San Antonio. I don't know if you yeah. saw that Black Rifle Coffee stippling he's doing, yeah. but that, that's going to be that's awesome. Good. But that point is, one of my favorite new pistols them. now is the Glock 48 because it's the slide of a 19, but the handle mm -hmm. of a 17. Mm -hmm. So my yeah. fat mitts on there and stuff. So I'm, I'm custom building Same. one of those for my EDC. Because I carry the, the, the what? The 40, less, no, that's, the, that's not the 48. I, the, 40, the 48's the, the single stack, excuse me. The 48's yeah. the one that I took him to the yeah, first that, one that's to get the done, single right? stack. Yeah. It's yeah. the yeah. other one that has the other, the 48 only, but it only has like 10 rounds. I'm like, yeah. I don't know. Like, I'm a, I need to carry something bigger. I'm a yeah, big yeah, guy. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. So You do not have small hands. No, yeah. no, and it, it's a forty. It's a little single stack. Yeah. Just weird because you know you like you're at round ten. I want a couple more. Yeah, I want a couple more. No, I was excited 
remember when the 43 first dropped and you're like, yeah, like so mm-hmm. small and Loved so it. comfortable. And um, then I was like, my hand is up on top of the slide. Yeah. And I was like, oh, is that the rear sight aperture that just went against my thumb? Yes, it was. I don't like the 43s. Like I, I, I love all Glocks all I shoot, but the 43, yeah. it's just so slappy. It feels like a 40. It, it pops so much because how short that barrel is. Yeah. The 48X is a little better, the but, or the 43X, better, yeah. but the, yeah, 40, it's a yeah. decent... So, are, are you, not that you're going to arbitrarily select a number. I don't mean to put you on the spot right now, but what is like the goal of said Glock collection? Are we are looking at least at, 50? Oh, wow. What? Why not? I No, I'm not. That's a I, great number. I didn't, I never owned a Glock till DEF CON tripped so one out for me. Now I own 12. Yeah. Yeah. But he, I mean, we were just all, at 28. And, and that, was a, that was a him. leap. Like that wasn't small. It's like, I'm just going to yeah. jump into the well, 22 the thing number. Is, a lot of those Glocks are are stock. I probably yeah. only have four custom Glocks, but yeah, I want I want to build out like two, uh, like 34s, which are the longer barrel that mm. Glocks that take on a, on like a comp gun. And I want to build those out to just- Why don't you just- Are you going to have like a litmus test of like this, for it to be considered a a, a custom? Yeah. Gucci Glock? Like, yeah. What, like what has to be done for that to constitute? Like well, I'm not going to- I want- Trigger, I, slide, oh, trigger sights, slide, you know, like ports, uh, like the whole nine. Like, not yeah. not just like, hey, do a match grade barrel in this here. Guy. No. Yeah. Yeah. This guy. This so guy. So all that is what's in that. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying it. Whatever, whatever that is, I'll yeah, get yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, it. It was to you off air. It feels good. Yeah, but it feels really, really good. Like I, I'm not a, I'm not a compact type of guy because of my hands. You're not. But that one is. It feels good in the. Feels hand. good. If you yeah. guys want to judge me, I bought a stair aug and I stair coated it I and one. I put a dead air suppressor on it Ooh. and it shoots so nice. Yeah. Got the constitution just in case. Just in case. Got a tourniquet just in case. Extra magazine. I keep my tourniquet around the shaft. Um, yeah, if you're, it's, it's where I stow yeah, my tourniquet. Your leg. Mm, yeah. Huh. Um, I, I carry band aids <laughs> to cover your you old carry bleeding, sleeping Whenever wounds. Whenever I bump into something, I'm like, ah, shit. So uh, my sheets don't look like the ones you saw. Yeah. That yeah. was really hard on me. Like really? That, yeah, that was. It's, it's, Matt it's, texted me. It's, it's, have you seen this? Is Crispy okay? That's gross. <laughs> yeah. I was like, it's weird, dude. I bleed from places that I had no idea that I like. I'm that telling was you, from, like, uh, I laid Matt down last night. And I get up and my wife's like, oh, you stained another one of my sheets. And I'm like, sorry, honey. And like, you look at her side and my side of the bed. <laughs> it looks like it just came out of the box. And then mine looks like I was back in the fucking hospital oh, wow. with the initial yeah. injuries. It's like blood here, stain here, this, that. Like, it's fucking- You're trying to like, just saran wrap? Can you sleep on saran right? wrap? Like, or like a, a garbage like a bag. Sur- like, <laughs> but then uh, they get dehydrated and die. Butcher uh, paper? Yeah. I, I have a like heat stroke. It's actually it's a, a drawback. Personal serious question. It's a drawback. Yeah. You don't have to answer it, but like, what is the most frustrating injury you have? Like the one, like- like I know you're missing a leg, but is there like is it like a knuckle that's always bleeding? Is it is that okay to ask? Yeah, or like yeah, okay. like I mean, your brain? I don't think there's a yeah. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> fucking TBI, man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, your your usage of the English language. Yeah, I mean, that, like, that, I, that, yeah. Uh, I mean that's my second language. Yeah, ESL. Yeah, ESL. I did go to ESL classes when I was growing up. Um, I don't know if there's one particular one. To be honest with you, I think it's it's a combination of everything. Like skin, period. Like it's one of the most frustrating things, right? Because like I'll buy like a nice pair of jeans. And a nice like pro snap, and you usually like, <laughs> <laughs> and you're like eyes rolled back into the, and a nice pearl yeah, snap. Yeah, yeah. What, are, what are those things uh, that you guys wear? It's a bolo, like a bolo. Yes, sir. But isn't like a bolo also the no? A bolo is be on the lookout too. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's a bolo tie. Um, yeah, so I have something like super nice, and then I'm like, dude, I love this. So like, I have like a, a, just a wide like cowboy hat that I bought that cost me a lot of money. And then I start bleeding and then it just bleeds through it. Shit like that, like clothes, um, jeans with the prosthetic, like where the knee's at. It's just, there's so much friction that it'll cut that. And then just overall, it's just the skin and bleeding on shit. But I think the most annoying part of my injuries that I hate the most is I get dehydrated so fast. I start cramping out and I'm... Um, like I can have heat strokes faster than anyone else it's or can't sweat as much. it's because I can't sweat as much and I lose a lot of the minerals when I sweat like you know electrolytes and, and sodium and all that shit like it just pours out and then trying to re, like just get all that back in me if I have one drink it all went to shit because now I'm dehydrated from one fucking drink Wow. so like that's like the most like frustrating part of this injuries is 
trying you to stay hydrated. Drink. And then I, yeah, yeah. And <laughs> the then most like, frustrating I, part I, is you yeah, can't drink. And then I have a guy that comes to the house and gives me IVs once a week and it's not covered by the VA. So like right. now you're talking 150 bucks. Like, don't get me uh, started on the VA, each. man. I'm gonna oh, like. fuck it. I don't want to go down that route. So, you know, I'm essentially coming out like six, $700 a month just to stay hydrated so that I can go outside and spend time with my friends and my nieces and my nephews and my wife and everybody. But I mean, I don't know. I think I've just gotten used to it. And like, I just pushed through it. And like, I don't know, like, I got really nothing to complain. Like, I get to hang out with a bunch of fucking badasses that have it worse than I do. So it's not that bad. Like, I'm good. Yeah. Not really. You know, some might say <laughs> skin's your biggest organ, crispy, but I think it's your heart. Because yeah. he doesn't have a lot of skin. <laughs> it's not a lot of It's because it's because I'm fat as fuck. So it's like working extra so <laughs> We had a, a brother, um, like just out of protection for him, dark place, uh, you know, like thinking about suicide. And, and if like all bells and whistles are pulled for us to go take care of a green beret that's like in a, in a bad place. And trying to work through the, the proper channels to get to take care of somebody, dude, I'm not joking. They were like, I'm on a call and the commander's on the call. And like both of us at the same time with different people, like, no, 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 you don't understand. I'm, I'm going to burn this motherfucker to the ground. Like I'm going to go yeah. scorched earth. I'm going to assault everything. You do, you'll never have a job. You'll never work in this industry again. Like you don't know who you're talking to right now, but I will call senators right now. The people that we know to take care of one person that was having not a bad, like a bad day. Yeah. And it was so difficult to go through proper channels to take care of them. <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah, I'm glad you're doing great. Dude, I'm, I'm glad that you have a big heart. I, I'm, but it is hard. It is hard. Like I'm, I'm very, very blessed to have a platform where I can reach out and get things done for yeah. me. Because like I've walked into the VA before, and I was like, "Hey, I need a prosthetic because I'm going on a, you know, this badass hunt in wherever." And they're like, "Well, why you need another prosthetic?" I'm like, "Because I fucking want it." Right. And then they're like, no, you have to go through all this to so just get it. And then at the end, they can even deny you. Right. To where I, lucky that I have Bamsi here, um, yeah. which they changed the name. I spent three years there from 2007 when I got injured to 2010 when I retired. All three years I spent it in that fucking hospital. So I walk in and I'm like, I need a leg. Matter of fact, I need two fucking legs. I need a running leg. I need a leg to go do this. And then one to go scuba diving. And in two weeks I have it done and I walk out. But that's just my experience. I can't, I've can't. i heard from other people that walk into the VA to try to get another leg or get this or get that. And then they don't hear back for like six, seven months. And then at that point, like that person that was hurting so bad ended up killing themselves because they couldn't fucking walk. They were in pain. They couldn't do things. And the fucking system failed them. Like, it is shitty. I've moved towns and now my VA is supposed to be here in San Antonio. This was a year and a half ago that I was supposed to have an appointment. I keep calling to get back in the system and still haven't heard shit. I've called 10 times. Wow. But it is system haven't heard problems anything. because there are amazing people that yeah. work for the oh, VA yeah, yeah. that try so hard to do the right thing. Yeah, when I meet them, I'll tell you. They're hamstrung and they're they're tied. Um, this is uh, Benji Hall that was at Bamsi. Um, he was the Fox News correspondent when Save Our Allies smuggled him out of Ukraine into Poland, Poland into launch tool, launch tool to hear and uh Bamsi, whatever it's called now, they're amazing. They're fucking they rock amazing. stars. Amazing. Right. Rock stars, bro. Like rock the, stars. The, there's a center for the intrepid. Full yeah. bird kernel. Well, center for the intrepid is just for the prosthetics, but oh. Bamsi is the actual hospital. Got it. Yeah. It's literally the best burn unit in, in the, the world. world. Yeah. Right. In the world. Like people come here from all sorts of like parts of the world to get training on burns there. Like this, this little we kernel. We were guinea pigs when I was there, yeah. but it was awesome. It's really bad that yeah. we have gotten so good, yeah. you know, in this war on terror with so many people blown up, so many people burned that we have the best and brightest on the planet where like this kernel that is the, the doctor for Benji that's taking care of his case, his phone is ringing off the hook from people all over the planet calling him to be yeah. like, hey, what do I do with this? Will you yeah. take a peek at this? Um, hey, I have to do the surgery to make it prosthetic, mm -hmm. where do you recommend? And yeah. like this poor guy who's brilliant, who could probably go work anywhere in the world for however much money these orthopedic surgeons could make, but he's still there. Yeah. Um, it's crazy. And there's nowhere that he would rather be than there. Dude, it's great. And even at that, like we talk about the best burn center in the world, which it is. 
but the advances that have been made on prosthetics, and this is not, I'm not bashing any of my fellow amputees because I'm not. I, you guys know the story. Found cancer, had my leg amputated uh, August 30th, second week of November, I was in a prosthetic walking. Right. Fucking great advances that they've been on prosthetics. We are still doing techniques in the burn world that were originally invented in Vietnam era. So we're still going, we're still coming in and having surgeries and shit like that to help burn patients now. And we're using techniques from the fucking Vietnam era. So there's, there's a big gap, and this is my shameless plug, of, of, of finding doctors that want to do that. There's not a lot of doctors in this country that are um, focusing on burns. They're, they're doing, you know, whatever other uh, field that they're, you know, studying under. But we don't have a lot of burn doctors in this country. And that's... One of the best fucking nonprofits that I'm involved with is Sons of the Flag. And um, Ryan Parrott kind of came and established that when he met one of my buddies who was severely burned and said, what is the VA doing for you? And he goes, this is as good as it gets. And keep in mind, this guy's all burned. So now he's, we're using the nonprofit and we are actually approaching doctors that are getting ready to choose their field. And we're like, what if we pay your, your you know, your field to become a burn doctor. We'll take right. care of every single step right. thing. And so we're recruiting doctors like that to become burn um, doctors. We are spending money into doing extensive research in burns because there's none. Like there is none. Like this is as good as it gets for me. Every time I get cut open or I have a fucking infection due to whatever shit I bumped into, they got to figure it out. Like I've had one of the, the, I was the first patient at BAMSI that got diagnosed with the most rare skin infection that they had ever seen from medication. So, and they didn't know how to treat it. They had to bring other people in and figure it out for me. And this was like a week before I went on my honeymoon, like two years ago. It was crazy. But there's not a lot of things out there. And now like that Sons of the Flag is kind of stepping in and taking care of all that shit, bro. It has been amazing to see like, how the burn world is starting to slowly get there and catch up with prosthetics. So, I mean, we're still years behind, but it's slowly getting there. And that's because of the stuff that he's doing every single fucking day, just focusing on that. Like, it's so dope, but awesome. we got a lot of work to do. There is, there's not, there's not a lot of research and, and development for burns and it, it's hard. And that's, and that's just me. Cause I, you know, I was wounded in, in the service. So I, I have somewhat of a medical thing. I can't imagine like, the first responders that go yeah. in and get burned, saving people, and then their insurance doesn't cover certain things. Right. Like, I, those guys fucking have it hard. So when you ask, like, you know, what gets you up in the morning? I'm, I'm good. I'm blessed. Like, I look like this. I have some challenges, but for the most part, I'm blessed. Like, I can, I can if I need something, I can get it done. Oh. Yeah. How does the, fa- how does the foundation, like the Black Rifle, like, you guys donate money to my school, I see pictures of big, uh, big checks. Like, what is the limpness? Like, what what is the measurement or or the the decision of of how you are supporting and and who? Because um, I, I get asked, <clears throat> there's so twenty times a week to support something. I'm oh, guessing yeah. so. Like, yeah. you guys are in the hundreds, thousands, I think, a month. Yeah. Uh, so we have a board, and what we did was we as shareholders we gifted. Uh, about fifteen million dollars in shares to the fund, and then that goes a hundred percent to veterans in need. And so, when I say veterans in need, it's mainly guys that have been physically affected by war. That's typically what how we classify that. It's really difficult, you know, as we all know, yeah. to define the psychological effects of war, and yeah. then how do we prioritize those things? So, it's really easy to say who's been physically affected by it, and then target those things. And then prioritize from a board's perspective. These are the things that we want to do. Um, and you know, Derek and, and Jay have been instrumental in helping that as far as us being able to prioritize that. But a big, big part of that is just guys will email the fund and they'll fill out a form, which I I've heard a lot of complaints about it too. It's like, well, I just want to send an email. I'm like, no, man, it's it's there's a prioritization and you have to go through a barrier of entry. There has to be some type of barrier of entry because if you're not willing to fill out a form, you're, you're not, you're, you're just not going to, how are you going to be good steward of a wedding? Yeah, Yeah, exactly. Of of the funding. So 
like he and I talked a lot about it the last couple of years as we start to direct the company and push it towards doing more good. One of the big things that we're trying to do and not trying, but what we do is like 100% of the dollars go to a veteran initiative. And then we'll be doing a lot more over the next couple of years because as we start to capitalize the fund, then it'll free up more capital. And then we'll be able to push into a lot more of these initiatives. Uh, but for right now, it's just, we prioritize things as a board and just say, this is what it looks like. We, Derek put out a great initiative with uh, Soren Expert where we're, we're building... Uh, Why is Derek I, so crumpy all the time? He's a razor right officer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, got blown up. Look, an missing a leg. Not, I mean, yeah. They're like a yin yang. I think they, I think they do really well as a yin and yang. It's, yeah. it's really good. Yeah. His like, day's like always. Uh, hey, how, how, hey, how, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. Fuck it. It's, 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 it's a good. It's a good couple. Yeah. You know? Love them both. But they're doing uh, adaptive uh, fitness uh, centers, not centers, but for home gyms. So for guys that have been physically affected by war, Let's how do go. we, how do we build gyms inside their homes? Yeah. How do we expand that project? Because everybody knows this, but it's. Something that we 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 have to keep reminding each other all the time, like, hey, physical fitness is a pillar oh, yeah. of positive psychology and fucking not yeah. for me. That's right, buddy. Hey man, I I I hear you loud and clear. I I also drive a lot of positive positive psychology on how much work that I do. So there's an instant, you know, balancing act of that. So yeah. lack of sleep, lots of work. You know, I like those things, you know, and then sometimes you don't get the runs that you need to. <laughs> as Tim was reminding me as he's feeling my fucking <laughs> fat gut. <laughs> did you cut yourself over there with that thing? Did no, you really? No, I didn't uh, cut it. No. I shaved off a callus. Oh, you did? Oh. It is like legit sharp. Oh, it's no hey, joke. Here's yeah. a question. You remember that um, samurai outfit from Aubrey Marcus's office? Yeah. You yes. guys remember that thing? Yes. Yeah. You don't think he has that anymore, do you? He definitely does. You think it's in his in his... Do you think it's in his house? You want to borrow it? It seems like he's he's more on like he's not into the samurai armor. No, anymore. he's like in the ayahuasca. I, I want hang that. Off with if he's gonna get rid of it, we should. I should he has some him. badass. Should text him and be like, "Hey, dude, um, can can I have he's that? Yeah. Really Where's your good ninja suit. I know. How much you want for it? As as um, like, I love to dunk on him because he's super good at everything that he does, he is, and yeah. he's gorgeous, and he's smart, and he has successful yeah, businesses. Um, he's also one of the last people on the planet I'd want to get in a sword fight with. Really? really? Yes, I I knew you guys would he's say a this. Sword guy. Huh. He's he's obsessed with like the. I've yes. seen like with nunchucks and stuff and doing like no sticks no and... he it's it's like a low low doesn't want a lot of people to know oh. that dude will chop well, you up. People are gonna know. Yeah, that's funny. Cats out of the bag. Sword. What are you gonna do? He's like ah! <laughs> puts on his fucking samurai suit. Fucking You're like Cruise, okay, bro. Samurai. Chill out the the, the still psilocybin. <laughs> What is this Tom Cruise last samurai? It's it oil. CLP it's the gun oil. Yeah, it's lube, dude. You gotta. Oh, yeah. It's it's like you know you gotta lube a chainsaw. You gotta lube a. a hey, what a was that cutter. other guy that was at your event? Kyle. Uh, By him? No. Carpenter. Awesome. No, that was in there. I don't think his name. He's he one of my guys. No, no, no. He came to visit. He's that. He was a fighter, tall guy. Oh, Kyle Kingsbury. Kyle Kingsbury. Uh, he's a former coup over there, right? At uh, on it. Yeah, bro. Yeah. That dude. I was like. Yeah, he's, he's so gorgeous like and Sam. big guy. He's seriously, yeah. like, but he's yeah. also beautiful. Like every inch of his body, I'm like, I was like, dude, if, if I was bro, gay, I was like, so, what up, daddy? Yeah, like, come okay. here, puppy. Oh, right. shit. Okay, okay. Oh, talking with okay. him. If, um, if, um, if well, I mean, when, if, when, when, <laughs> when. <laughs> Not if it's when. Yeah, it's, <laughs> he's also you, great human. It's only happened it once like between it, Matt yeah, and I. Relax, guys. Yeah, he's uh, he's he's bounced off the. He's like in a starch libertarian research purposes conservative. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he and Aubrey both have they've taken their journeys, and these people are coming back to the rational logic centrist he's, he's side like, of coming to my farm, bro. We yep. got this, this, and this, and we'll go shoot. And I was like, I didn't picture you being like that. Isn't it's that awesome. interesting. Like, cool. What's that? Yeah, isn't that interesting? Like yeah. people have people have gone from one side to the other, and we've seen it. Like they've just had it. They just had enough. They're just yeah. like, this is fucking stupid. Yeah, that might be they the can't one. Do it. Positive that came out of COVID, people were like, "Oh, the government will actually do this." Yeah. yeah. Oh my yeah. God! Like, huh. and they're not even hiding it this time. I will say that is not the one thing. I would say that's the primary positive thing that has come out of the last couple of years is that people finally woke up to how fucking stupid and yeah. manipulative the government, our government representatives, 
and people bureaucrats can be. Mm -hmm. Now, if we can just like get everybody to understand, like this is what gun owners have been dealing with from like the ATF side of, of, you know, guys that have been, you know, running gun shops and FFLs, they've been targeted for years by these mid-level fucking bureaucrats over there that just arbitrarily sign pieces of paper do you remember when Q dealt with that a couple of years yeah. ago? Yeah. When that they're just like, they're just reclassifying yeah. random yeah. shit. Yeah. They're just like, oh, I guess you're all SBR felons right now, now, guys. Yeah. Oh, hey. You're like, yeah. what's, the, what's the brace for SBRs? SB tactical. Yeah. Yeah. Same yeah. Thing. yeah. Like, they're going yeah, through yeah. that right now. Yeah. They're in the, yeah. like, oh, we're just going to change this policy change and make it. all of these guns and they've, possession they've, of them they've felonies. Sold yeah. Over 4 million braces. So you, you, you I mean, yeah, 4 million. Yeah. If let's just say 4 million people have bought, I mean, I own like 30 of them. Or more, but imagine <laughs> you mean four million zero. people. They, be, yeah, you zero. lost them in a zero. Boat yeah, boat be, become felons overnight. Four million people. Like, yeah, but it's, it's, it's a slippery slope of freedom, and, and we've been perpetuating the same thing for so long. Where it's yeah. like, okay, like you said, Second Amendment people have been fighting this fight f- for decades, mm-hmm. and but recently in the age of social media, now First Amendment people were like, regardless of the side that you're on people have been stung by the censorship that goes along with social media yeah. where whatever the, whatever the institution with whatever their algorithm is, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, they're, they're coming in like, no, no, you can't say that. And then a few months later, they're like, oh, okay. So it was conspiracy. It wasn't a conspiracy. It was actually a lab in Wuhan where yeah, right. the yeah. Wuhan virus came Just from. Just kidding. There is yeah. a laptop. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. We deplatformed <laughs> a few thousand of you. Yeah. Or then it was yeah. like, insert the next thing that they're, they're, but people still do not grasp unless you are aware, unless you've traveled to Venezuela, unless you've seen what the Chinese government does, unless you know what the Russians do, you still don't fully understand how horrific and dangerous a, an autonomous government is. And when yes. they are given power, yes. how they will never relinquish it, how they'll never give it back never, ever. and how important freedom really is. Yeah. But we, we, you know, you don't lose freedom by miles, you you lose them by inches. Yep. And in the past few years, we have been giving up inch by inch by inch. And I am a freedom first guy. Like I don't care how you identify. I don't care what person you're going to be married or to or have sex with or what you're going to smoke. It's free. Like be free. You know, just don't yeah. talk to me about what's in my fanny pack or you know um, what I'm going to have on top of my my war table at my house because yep. it's just freedom, just freedom across the board. And um, COVID definitely brought some people to this side of the conversation, but nowhere near enough. No. As we are seeing right now on Twitter, where they're like, wait, no, no. Censorship is actually okay. You yeah. you are seeing that argument come up like, okay, well, what is your problem with Elon Musk? Well, he wants free speech. And oh, it's a, it's a bad thing? You're yeah, just saying yeah. that out loud yeah. now. Yeah, you're just saying it You just said loud. that. Like, yeah. that just came out of your mouth. You're yeah. actually against free yeah. speech? Yeah. Oh, you're only okay with speech that aligns with whatever narrative propaganda you're trying yeah. to perpetuate right now. But, it is all a slippery slope. I like, think it's like, they well, will you know, force you to do whatever. Speech you hate is different than hate speech, right? And yeah. it's like what people need to realize is that, you know, you're going to hear opinions. I hear opinions all the time that I fucking absolutely disagree with, but I don't think they should be censored. I mean, no. I welcome a good argument, you know? I also want those ideas that I disagree with to be out, you know? And yeah, I, and I, then you can criticize it and show fact and, yeah. and substantiate yeah. your claims and your arguments to get them. Why, yeah. It's, you know, it's like so if you have an argument, at best. Yeah. let the best argument win. And that's, that's what fair. happens when you have open discourse. If you remove one side of the conversation, it, maybe it was a decent idea. Let's just say Elon Omar came up with like a fairly decent idea. If there's no contrary argument to that idea, that that fairly decent idea will never evolve to be mm-hmm. a real good idea. Oops. It'll just stay in the echo chamber of how she created it in that vacuum. And that's what we're going to get. Or a better option is let argument and town hall free speech happen. And then the, be- the best idea is the one that wins out. Shocking. Shocking. Yeah. Wow. May the best idea prevail. Yeah. Yeah. It's just strange. You can't put that in like 180 characters mm. or less though, or whatever it is. <laughs> but you can definitely put <laughs> it in the constitution and it's in, in there. there. Yeah. I saw a thing that said, uh, the same people that are leaving Twitter right now are the same people that bought a Tesla. <laughs> oh no! But it's, it is it is insane if you think about like the, right. the amount of people that are like <laughs> melting. Yeah. Yeah. They're like melting, melting down. They're, it, I mean, props to Elon. Like, I, like fucking props, man. <laughs> I, I mean, but it, it is weird, right, to see that side of of our culture just literally melt down. That someone says there should be free speech on this platform. Yeah. Like and, minds are melting. Yeah. I mean, he's I'm also sure not you guys a conservative. No, he's not. God, he's not, not a conservative. Stop. So. Like, the, so the, yeah. Yeah. How many guns do you think Mr. Musk owns? 
I don't know. His protection detail probably has a bunch. Yeah. Uh, or his details, I would probably imagine he's like... He, he is a middle-of-the-road, yeah. rational logic, mm -hmm. let's find the best option type person, mm -hmm. and that's not good enough. Well, he, he, as a, he's a technologist, right? Which is by nature of, I think, classifying himself as that, which would be more of a future thought leader. He, he's apolitical because... And I've heard a lot of this in the context of if you're classifying yourself by a political party, you're actually thinking about things from uh, the past. You actually think about things in the future, which is declassification of political party. And then ideally putting the the logical steps or sequence of the system together to not identify with such. Because what that is, partisan politics, is team play. And when you have team play, you're just cheering for the team. You're not thinking about what's actually happening within policies that are going to get us to Mars, for instance, yep. right? It's just not going to happen because you can politicize that. It's just like they have. It's like, well, people want to go to the fucking moon or Republicans. And then all of a sudden, the anti-mooners are going to be like, we're Democrats. Like, yeah. we, we got to stay here. You know? And you're like, what the fuck is going on, man? Like, it's just space. Like, yeah. what the fuck are you guys talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah. Planes. That's fun. Planes. Planes. <laughs> have you guys Planes. flown since the mask mandate has been removed? Yeah, just flew down. It was awesome. Dude, I, I haven't yet. I haven't it yet. It was awesome. It was, it I was wild. on a flight home and the pilot came on at like 6 p.m. or something as we were coming in. He goes, Blah, 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 blah. You can take your mask. Dude, everybody was like... Really? Oh, yeah. The the freaking stores came by with a bag and we're all throwing our masks away. Yeah, well, I mean, I mean I'm using right. your segue about like space. It's oh, just space. How does... Space. We're, we're, we're talking about science and science became political. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And and now there are people that have driven their feet and their heels yeah. so far into the yeah. dirt. They can't retain... And I won't let them also. Like, I remember when you said I was going to kill your grandma because I wasn't wearing a face mask Matt in my backyard yeah. while Matt I was exercising. That. No, 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 no. He was like that. looking this direction, but absolutely not. I've been, I've been he's also pretty much anti mask just, just so you know. Yeah. And then the, you're on a plane and there's still people yeah. that were like, oh, yeah. I'm not going to let it go. Yeah. I'm not going to let it go. And it's fine because yeah. it's America yeah, and you can thing. do whatever you want yeah. and I'll support it and I'll give you space. And yeah. I, if sure. you want to have six feet and in addition to your mask, yeah. totally fine. But don't get in my freedom. Yeah. yeah. And don't think you'll yeah. ever try to do that again. Yeah. Dude, there's people holding on to that so bad. I saw a video the other day of this old man wearing a mask and an employee from the oh, yeah, there pulled out pepper spray and was like, yeah, yeah, like, you're gonna kill me. You're gonna kill me. Oh, like, wow. whoa, bro. Like, relax. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, I was like, ooh. Just like, freedom, man. Just that's be free. Awesome. Yeah, love, was, love people, protect kids. Yeah. It's a novel Put idea. Put in the dirt and be free. Like it is it's a novel idea in the context of where we are classified typically as conservatives when we're we're the people that are going out saying, be free, be you. Yeah. Identify however you want to, like use whatever pronoun you want, like. You know, marry whoever you want, smoke whatever you want, do your thing. You do you. And then it's like, that's the conservative party of today is like, yeah, you do you, man. Like, as long as you're not like asking me what's in my fanny pack or what's in my gun safe at home. like, Or, or don't I, tell me how to believe or think yeah, about yeah. you. Because then you're projecting into, into my belief system. And that's not cool because that's, that's the line here. Yeah, but, the, but you say that, but then at the counterpoint to that is like, because you were saying things have been political. I mean, they politicized science and sex. Yes. And it's like the, the swimmer thing. It's like, there's a level of you can't do what you want because the majority yeah. can't placate to the minority. Like you can't have a dude that has a giant cock, put a, grow his hair out for three months and yeah. swim and get number one. It's unfair. It's bullshit. It's fucking. And so it's like- There's a father of three daughters right. that are athletes. Yeah. I'm like- that and that sucks. But, 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 but I'm saying sucks. that that's become political sucks. where you're you're transphobic or and not, not yeah. in the slightest, not in the slightest, but I like, not it's it's not, not transphobic. It's, I'm a feminist. I'm like yeah. for women's success, yeah. Yeah. like yeah. especially my daughter's my wife, you know, yeah. like yeah. Yeah. please don't. There's a chance. But I think that's a conservative. So mm -hmm. the conservative <laughs> night nature, at least people that are saying, hey, you do you, yeah. I, I'm going to do me. Whereas I think there's the, the more socialist, if not the socialist portion of the United States, they've said, we... We're not into that. Like, they're definitely not into that. Yeah. So they've been able to militarize and weaponize social media platforms against people that have contradictory thoughts. Whereas we're more of like, hey, everybody just be cool, man. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. can't we just be cool? Like, I, I'm yeah. not going to weaponize a platform. Like, that's crazy. That's, that's anti-freedom. And then they're like, oh, but we are. Yeah. yeah. Right? It's like, okay, geez. All right. Well, at least chill out, man. The cat's out of the bag. Yeah, yeah, it's so like, great. We've been we've been saying it for like the past few years. Oh, you just deplatformed. Yeah. I'm shadow banned. Like we talk about it all the time. 
Um, dude, I, I've been shadow banned for almost six months on Instagram, so I've gotten no new followers because now everybody like, dude, did you delete your Instagram? Once a week, I get that text. You have to type in yeah. the entirety yeah. of yeah. everything. Every, the last you can't letter. type Matt Best. Yeah, it has to be Matt underscore letter. best underscore official. Yeah. And then right when you get to the L at the end, I pop up every time. Yeah. I get texts on a weekly basis of it. I haven't seen your shit in a while. No, and then even like my uh, any of my views, so like even reels that do really well on that stuff. There's um, there's 99% of watch are people that already follow me, yeah. meaning they distribute none of my content. And I'm like, I'm a pretty fucking conservative dude and I don't really bring politics into my mm, fucking no. platform. I'm like, I shoot guns and I keep it pretty fun. And it's still like, they've, they've targeted me, you know? It's, well, it's a lot wild. of this could be like, I file a complaint against you every day. And right, yeah, you just- you A lot of this could <laughs> be report, stemming report, report, from me. Report, 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 yeah. 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 Dude, okay. I hit 400,000 yeah, followers and I lost 10,000 right? followers yeah. in one yeah, night. Yeah, see? You just yeah. did it, right? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not it. joking because everybody you know, goes, oh, I'm shadow banned because this is my content. Isn't like, and also, I'm legit. Like, if I do Matt Best and just searched, it, you know, my, my fake fake accounts come yeah. up first. Yeah. Like yeah. five yeah. different yeah. fake accounts. Mm -hmm. And then maybe like, you should make fake accounts for yourself. You know, I like that. <laughs> like Matt Breast or something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know? Check out my Twitter. Mr. Matt Best. No, no, but this is officially not Matt Best. So someone's watching my account. So, this is perfect to show you how I fucking, I hate social media. And I, I only do it because like, obviously I like to show people cool shit and, and the business. But when I, uh, I texted DEF CON on, um, I put it on my Instagram story and it was the six Glocks that I just bought. And I said, yo, DEF CON, can I drop some Glocks off? Right. So not selling a firearm, nothing right. illegal. Uh, within about 30 minutes, they removed it for harassing or and violence. Yeah. And I and I have the screenshot of it, and and I'm sitting there going, it was a picture of six legally purchased firearms yeah. that were going to be given to an FFL holder, and it just, it, I don't know why I get so mad at that shit, but, but that's where we're at. Yeah, that, that's inciting violence or something. Yeah. Well, yeah. and then it's I, not too late though. It's not it's too not. late. We, but, we can we can we but can. But you uh, have to like, change the people that are fucking building those algorithms and to to yeah. fucking think. Outside of their stupid fucking ignorant boxes. Yeah. They there's there's a moment in the past two years, they were scared. There was a moment where they were worried about civil unrest. They thought that they um, might get a virus and die. And I want them to think back to those moments. And that's one of the many things that is that has brought so many people back to the rational side of the conversation is fear. They were sitting there and they knew the government was not out for their best interest. They were being lied to over and over again. Yeah. And there's nobody there for them. Like individual responsibility, the ideas around why we're this strong, capable people where we had to forge our existence out of the woods, you know, killing deer just to have my homestead, have food. Like that was the beginning of, of our people in America. Well, we've been good times of late and good times made some pretty weak men. Yeah. And well, in the past two years, let's just not forget what that moment felt like when you were scared, when you had like wait in a line for food for hours and hours on end. And then when you got there, they sprayed you down with a bunch of disinfectant. You had to wear a double mask and you had to show your car just to get through the door. That's people, not as bad as it's going to get. How many people purchased guns when this happened? You remember that? Highest spike in American yeah. history. Dude, I had calls from friends in Austin from when I used to live there that always said, well, you have too many guns. Saying, hey, do you have a spare gun? Yeah, you got I an extra buy? one? That's yeah. not, no, I don't. I don't. And it wasn't because I didn't want to give them a gun because I helped them buy guns. No, that's I what I did. I don't like parting away with mine. No. I <laughs> well, wanted and, them and to understand, understand the like, process. It, it, not even the fire thing, but even like the, the judgment, whether you got vaccinated or not. Like I openly, I'm openly not vaccinated. I'll never get it. And um, the amount, right? Be careful. Yeah. But the, the amount of like either, in but... social settings, <laughs> I would bring that shit up and people would be like, you could see the disgust oh, yeah. in their faces like you piece of shit. Oh, yeah. Like, and now fuck. they're like, oh, oh, it didn't about matter. That. Didn't about matter. That. So you can still transmit. About you that. can still get sick. Got it. Oh yeah, it didn't but matter. there's no apology. No. Oh no. Oh no. There's there's oh, no apology. Because well, it, it, an apology means you have to have a sensibility about your ego, and people don't have. To <laughs> and do you that. have to take accountability. So that that's not and what this is all about. Smelling this, and you did autograph this. Yeah. I did. I Thank signed you. that for you. Do you, it's do you know what this is? for? I think it's so you yeah, can hang it. That's for so you can hang it, Tim. Yeah, so you can put it on your shop. He's getting other ideas because it probably fits through. Well, my kids are here, fellas. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, yeah, I yeah. need to We're close this down because I want to go see the kids. All right. Thank you. God bless America. Yeah. Stay safe for stay And free. wait, before we end, yeah. what's the name of your book, oh, yeah, sir? Yeah. Scars and Stripes out June 7th. Don't wait for it. Go to Barnes & Noble because that algorithm in purchasing for the New York Times best sellers list. Or
It yeah. does help. It does help. It does help. So it's available everywhere books are sold? Everywhere all books are sold. Awesome. Did you read your audiobook? I am reading my audiobook and man, it takes a long time. It's hard. Perfect. Okay. Check it out. Yeah. Scars and Stripes. Yeah, later.